All right, you guys, welcome back to Caffeine and Chess to episode two. To my right over here, we got Larry. He's a videographer, editor, social media expert, digital marketing expert, and he obviously can't stand, bro, at all. Right to my other right, we got Sam. He's a loving husband, father. He loves the kids, entrepreneur, relationship guru. Right over here, we got Rome. He's a video production, audio visual specialist, and a loving husband and father. Then we got Orlando. Therapist and comic book writer, husband, father, all the above. And you got me, just me. Welcome back, guys, to Cafe Chats episode two. And how's everyone doing today? Excellent. I'm good. Yeah. All right, good. So the other good. day, a few weeks ago, Larry sent me a a text and the text was Luke Graham seven years. Now you guys could pause the video, listen to the song or wait to the end because brothers do need their watch time and everything. Listen to the song. When you do listen to the song, it kind of goes like this. I don't know if you guys listened to the song or heard of it, but mm -hmm. once I was seven years old, my mama told me, go get yourself some friends so you won't be lonely. And it has that little beat to it as well. So listen to the song, you're thinking about my life when the guy's journey starts from when he was seven years old you know, go get some friends. And when he was 11 years old, his dad told him, go get yourself a wife so you won't be lonely. And then when he's 20, aspirations and dreams. And it's all like a, a song about how time flies and don't forget to reflect and connect yeah. with your dreams and your family and friends too, because we could all get lost in that translation in our lives. Now, what it also brought me back to, and I will get to the point, when I was 11 years old, that was my first time I had a girlfriend. She was a sister, and I broke with her after a week of dating. I was 11. Just don't knock me. You know, when I see her on Instagram, I'm like, damn, bro, you messed up. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to 11 years old, and then Larry sent me another tweet about Lil Duvall talking about, mm. you know, you never want to be a woman's first good man. You're going to be the lesson. Even though at 11, I could say I was a good person, but I'm a different person now than I was 11 and obviously more matured in some things. But going back to that tweet, you never want to be a woman's first good man. You're going to be a lesson. What's you guys' take on that? Are we just going to all sit here? And just, oh, I love how we all, we all look at you first. Oh, like, Larry, come in. <laughs> um, I know it is a lot of relationship complexity. So yeah. this is a rabbit hole tweet right here. So yeah. you lead the way, Larry. Um, well... It's, it's interesting. So what is he really saying when he says that, right? You're going to be uh, the lesson. And so what do you guys think he really means by that? You guys saw the clip, right? Yeah. 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 Clip. yeah. So what, what do you guys think he's actually saying? It's all context, like Elena would say. It's all context. Yeah. What's, the root of it? What's the root of it? Absolutely right. To me, I think it carries a place of hurt from Lil Duvall. Maybe protection. Mm -hmm. Could be cynical. Probably the misogynistic, misogynistic no, tone wasn't, because it wasn't Lil Duval. It was uh, it was uh, not Lil Duval. Was the other clip? This was uh, no. I think it was Lil Duval tweet. Okay, yeah, right. I think it was Lil Duval tweet. But it, I think it carries maybe a misogynistic tone because it implies that women are not capable of having mature relationships. Women are very capable of having a mature relationships. <laughs> like I said, this is a very <laughs> complex tweet that deals with the dynamic of relationships okay. and it highlights less experienced women, but it also could be flipped as, hey, a woman may never want to be a, a man's first good woman because she'll be the lesson. But let's stick with the but, but what's the lesson? That's the point I'm trying to get to. So like before I answer the question, I want to hear you guys, uh, your thoughts on what the lesson is. Is it heartbreak or what's, what's the lesson? I think the lesson in the end is maturity. Mm -hmm. Maturity. If we really think about it, who we are right now as men and who women are now as women, but think about when we were that age, mm -hmm. who was really ready for a relationship. Um, I look at the thing, the man I am now and who I was back then, and I'm ashamed of the things I've done. Mm -hmm. I was a, absolutely, I have no problem saying a woman. I, and I was actually taught to do that. I was taught to have you sleep with a lot of women and everything, and I did it well. Uncle's encouraged. But um, it's horrible, because I've dogged plenty of women too. I've absolutely dogged out tons of women, and I thought that's what you were supposed to do. Now, as a grown man, as a father, not saying I want some dude dogging my daughter. Mm -hmm. and But again, like Nate always references that I reference, you have to look at it in context. Who I was when I was 16, 17, 18, now, even when I turned 30s into my 40s, I'm a 
completely different. Man, and I was worn out pretty much. By the time I was 23, 24, completely worn out. <laughs> completely worn out. So I was happy. I matured. And I was just like, I'm now ready to have an established, ready relationship. Uh, but I know cats who are even my age now who still aren't ready to do that. But I don't know how they could do it. Okay. Yeah, I think the treat, the tweet, excuse me, the tweet, the treat, <laughs> this is a treat. You know, it's too <laughs> much. But, you know, when you think about the tweet, I think it's irresponsible mm-hmm. because it lacks accountability on the man's side of things. Uh, we talked last time about God ordained man had a house. So if you're putting this on women that uh, you're going to be their first lesson. Well, as God ordained relationships, we're supposed to pour into our women. So how is that her fault? If you the lesson, and I, where I come from, a lot of men is players from the Himalayas. So <laughs> mm-hmm. what we really talking about? Like most women mature faster; they're ready for those things. Yeah. They they play house when they're kids. They can't wait to walk down the aisle and put on that white dress and and be somebody's spouse. We we're the ones running traditionally and generally speaking. We got to have the house, the 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 job. We got to have be able to provide before we even think about walking down the aisle and being in a relationship. We got to have all the worldly things in place before we feel like we are equipped enough and ready to even have a real monogamous relationship. So to say women don't be their first lesson or don't be their first love or whatever he, how he put, yeah, how he framed it. Um, From where I come from, you didn't want to be our first girlfriends. But there's a flip side to that. I know a lot of relationships that the first person they dated they were done. They were good. They didn't need to go mm-hmm. chase skirts and go to the clubs. They've been together since high school, junior high. Um, and so what's the lesson? You said that that's a great question, Larry. What's he really talking about as we unwrap this? What's he really saying? Um, that can go so many different ways. But I don't agree with that tweet because it's all a journey of who you meet and when you meet yeah. them and where you are in your place, in your space when you meet them. Orlando's right. The person we would date at 16 may not be the same person we date at 35 right. or 45 or death do us part. You you meet someone later in senior in life. So right. that's that's a very general tweet that I think is irresponsible. I think anyone at that age, you're going to be each other's lesson. Yeah. You're going I mean, to learn together and you're going to learn what you like and what you don't like. Yeah. Right. And seeing and being where you are in that time and right. place. So. Uh, yeah, we got to go deeper than just that general stuff he put out there. Yeah, I don't know if, if what he says is irresponsible, as you put it, but I do think that there is coming from a place of uh, pain and hurt on, on his part. I think he's experienced some heartbreak, um, and that's probably what he meant by that. There, he's not here, so there's no way to really mm-hmm. verify that. Right. But the way I interpreted it was that he, you know, was, you know, the lesson was heartbreak. And, you know, when you put all your love into someone and it doesn't work out, you know, unfortunately that's equals heartbreak. And that's, that can be a painful experience, especially your first time. Um, so I, that's how, I, that's how I look at it, but who knows what he really meant. I'm curious how many hearts he broke. And, you know, I think there's <laughs> a heart. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's accountability on both sides. I'd like to hear his story and why he framed that up that way. Because again, who has he hurt? Who has he been in relationship with that he wasn't him. fully vested, but they were invested in him. And so, he, again, it's not, I don't think it was accountability on both sides. First is first, but now everyone's filling you out the gate. But even with heartbreak, when we think about that, heartbreak, when we talk about heartbreak, heartbreak when we're 18 and 19, I really absolutely believe that promotes growth, mm-hmm. promotes maturity, understanding, uh, learning how to deal with breakups, things that go along with that. You know, it's just like a maturity with, when we were kids, you know, kid who liked a girl, the, the boy who liked a girl back in the day, Throwing rocks first thing you do is you throw stuff at her, you hit her, you, you pull her hair and stuff like that. That's how you show how you say That's how some people do it. So even with that, you know, I think back to first loves and girls I was so into back then when we broke up, I was just devastated. So I look back at that now, I was, oh man, that was just like, you swear back then that young love, that puppy love, you swear this is going to be the one, this is the one I'm going to marry. And, and literally, 250, 300 later, you know, that's not the that one. Video, that that video. Wow. Oh, I, I, let me be clear. I keep it real, baby. I've actually counted. <laughs> I, I, definitely over 250. And I, I don't say that with pride. I, I say that with like, holy smokes. I, did you do that? Oh, yeah, I did it. Because I remember. Were you at an auction when you did that? Like 35, 35, 35, 35, 35. 35. 
So, so the man with the giant jersey on. Yeah, so when you, you, when you, when you, good looking, he was like, Oprah, oh, you get the D, you get the D. I was, I was short with bad teeth, so I, I had. He lied. <laughs> He lied. This dude showed me he, he had photos looking like Nelly. With a exactly. Yeah, 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 no, I had a when I had a six pack. Uh, no, I, I, you know, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I stopped counting after like thirty. Like it's somewhere around there. But two fifty, that's what. See, I think. It's Thank God you saved. You say that <laughs> I was never one to. Uh, it in, in respect, you know, we, we we love our wives, and we, yeah. we wouldn't be where we're at, you know, um, if we didn't walk those journeys. To appreciate who we're who mm-hmm. we're with now, um, but I can say you know going back to heartbreak, it does promote maturity. It does promote growth. I remember vividly. It's weird to think about it because we're talking about when I was twelve years old. I was like, dang, you know, that hurt. It hurt so much. Like my whole world literally collapsed, and I couldn't like. It was hard to breathe. Like, my boys were like, oh, there's plenty of fish in the sea. I was like, I didn't want any other fish. Uh-huh. Like, I love my salmon. Give me my salmon. Fish. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? fish. And mm-hmm. I think that was the biggest challenge was um, about being the first. It was the first time I actually openly gave my heart to someone. Mm-hmm. And when to have that crush, to, to feel like you didn't appreciate what you had. Like, you, you threw it away for this? That guy? Like... That guy? I was like, oh my God. And the sad thing is, looking back at it, I ain't going to make him drop. I ain't going to make him drop. Don't do it. But yeah, you know, you're 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 doing this. But in in the midst of it, to be that guy, like, she came back and was like, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. And I was like, but this cruise has left the port. Right. Like, you don't get that chance. Right. Now, how are you, 12? Uh, realistically, no, I was realistically, I was about 15. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. But it was about that, but, you know, from that 12 to 15, like, you're still running the dynamics of how you interact with these girls. Yes, yes. Like, you know, oh, I bought you an ice cream. I was that guy. I wasn't throwing rocks. I was like, yeah, I got you a Sunday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? On a Tuesday. <laughs> Real talk. But that was where, like, the, the night dynamics of was like, I am willing to open my, my heart, my feelings, and share this with you. And you took it for granted. And that betrayal was so devastating to realize I was compared and left for this person, this other person who ran you through the mud, was looking at and up literally in three, four other women. And now you're another check mark on his list. You were never that. You were, you were the prize. And yeah. to realize that at the age of 15 and to understand that I had to go through growth. I, I had so. to go through maturity. Yes. And to realize, okay, I'm not that, and I don't mean any disrespect, I trust me, I, I never did ke- count, right. but I had my, we, we all did, yeah, exactly, you know, I didn't always walk with Christ, you know, kind of thing. But my point being is, I realized who I was and who I wanted to be and who I wanted to run with me, even as someone in dating. That's that's deep. I, I think I'm gonna flip it on you real quick. A quick story. I don't think we always matured through these life lessons. One of my guys, uh, the one that got away, um, they were dating in college, and she got pregnant, and she aborted the child, and it devastated him. Mm-hmm. Then she went on to marry and get with some other guy and have a beautiful family, and he still to this day looks at her like, why wasn't I good enough to have a baby with? And now she's gone on and she's thriving and he still hasn't gotten over it. He still hasn't healed from it. Mm-hmm. That was ev- eventually, evidently his first love. Mm-hmm. And so it speaks to the tweet now that he he never healed from it. So maybe that tweet is based on what, like it's you said, Larry, he hasn't healed. He's hurting. Yeah. He comes from a place of hurt. So not everybody matures through those lessons. Some get stuck in the DeLorean in 1955 and never come out of that. Mm-hmm. But on the other account, let me just ask, wouldn't that be kind of a concern that you are now in your 30s, 40s, this age, and you still haven't gotten over Absolutely. over that? Well, 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 well so you know, getting over it or, or, uh, uh, or just, just but everybody handles minded. trauma differently. Yeah, because like, like, uh, think about it. It's not just like, oh, she broke his heart, right? That's one level. But like you aborted, yeah, a child. That's yeah, something. You know, that's because that's a, that's a whole thing. Yeah. You, I, I can imagine myself or anyone here 
not being able to get over that and still that, you know, having that be a part of, because that's a part of your personal history. It's yeah. like, I could have, what could that child have been? See, and I'll piggyback off that. It was so, uh, granted, I had to go through my maturity. I came from a background where, I've said it before, We, my family has mafia mentality. You come in, you don't get out. <laughs> okay, so if I put that, my mindset in where he was at, he, in like, in that front, right, he's like, that was my legacy. That was my son. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I can say this. I come from a family where I'm the only male that carries my last name. Same here. Like, Same here. I have sisters, but I'm the one carrying the last name. So if you stepped out yep. and then you aborted that, like, you just killed my lineage. Mm-hmm. And it hurts. And, and then you just, you just fall into uh, the, the rabbit hole on where, where my family could be, what my grandkids could be like. You ruined all of that for me. Like, I'm just from that yeah, topic. Yeah, she, so she had every right like, to do what she, she did. He felt betrayed, but um, he's hurt. I don't know if she had every right to do she, well, she, well, she, well, she well, well, right. yeah. To me, she had every right because it's, they weren't married, and there's a lot of things that go into that, and they, yeah. they were young, and all those things that we, we just said that we would do differently later in life. Maybe she has regrets with that. I don't know, but I know she's moved on, right. and, and it's gone on and thriving, yeah. Yeah. and he and sees he, what he could have had. He sees her children, he sees yeah. her husband, right. and so he wants to be in that spot, yeah. like you said, and he's not there, and so it's a constant reminder that, yeah, is he married? And no, and he's, he's never been married. He never had kids, and and so you and look how at is he uh, he's our age. See, so to, to, defend, her, man. to yeah. defend her too, she's the one who had to go through that abortion. Yeah, right. So if you can imagine, it might be not to decrease his level of pain. But it might have been even more traumatic for her mm-hmm. because she had to make that decision. So what what did she have to do to think about to to come to that conclusion that she's going to make that decision to abort the kid? Mm-hmm. Then she had to go to the clinic or the hospital or wherever. Then the doctor had to do what the doctor had to do, and she had to go through that physical pain. So like, there's levels yeah. to oh, her. We're not, we're not, we're not and if she, any of that. Yeah. no, I'm just saying right. like, if she can move past. And move on and actually have a family and be happy, you know, why can't he? Yeah. Right. So I'm just playing devil's advocate he like could. you do. And yeah. he, you know, so but that's, he doesn't have to go through that. Here's the question. In the pain that we walk through, is it a choice to stay there? Yes. I think so. Yeah. Yes. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, think so. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. We, can't play, we can't be victims every, for the rest yeah. of our lives. But how Eventually, you, but you have so to get off all the society, cameras. like, feel like they have to cling to that. And like they are, they because don't that's how they it's identify themselves, and that's not okay. But be like friends and let it go. go. <laughs> we as men, we as human beings, we just as people, we can't help who we love, right? We can't. You love who you love. So, with that same account, can he not help the way he felt about about that from back then? Of course. So when we say it's a, it's, a, it's a choice, he's he's choosing to stay still connected with with that that situation from years ago. Well, like you feel said, the way we're you talking feel. about, you know, we're not like talking about last year. No, no, but like, you feel the way you feel. But yeah, you to, but, but you have to move on. You got like, bro, listen, man, I've had my heart broken by uh, quite a few women. Right. Um, if I continue to live with those thoughts, it would be painful. If I choose to like mentally relive those moments, talking about it now, I can talk about it with right. you and go, oh, I remember that. Yeah. That was that was hard. You know, right. that was heartbreaking, but it's whatever. But if I like dwell on it and just live in that, that pain will come back. Thinking about like, oh, the abandonment mm-hmm. or, oh, the, you know, the lack of maturity or why did she make this choice or that choice? And I, I'll drive myself crazy living in that moment. And it's not fair to me. And, you know, at some point well, well, I might do something. I might call her and be, why didn't you do this? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what, what time you calling her? <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about that time you broke my heart. Like, oh, man, what time is she going to court and getting that restraining order? Seven o'clock in the morning. Right. So that's that would be a choice that I'm making, but I'm making the opposite choice. I don't think about that stuff anymore. Right. Yeah, Occasionally it'll come up. Maybe I'm watching a show, or maybe uh, a, a picture will come up, or something. And I'm like, oh, oh I remember, I remember that. that. Yes. I remember that right? Or a song. Or a song. Or a song. Right. Or, or even a scent. 
Like uh, there's, oh, yeah. there was a, um, in high school, I used to wear this uh, scent, and when I smell it, I'm like, oh, it takes me right back. Yeah, mm-hmm. But what's really cool for me anyway? Cool water cologne. Thank cool you. Water cologne. <laughs> Thank you. I it really was like David water job for water. water. Boy, I told it. It was an obsession. <laughs> it's Sinyaki, baby. Uh, <laughs> <Sinyaki. laughs> so what do you think I'm wearing right now? See, wait, I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> See, my hat. I, I bought. I recently bought like the cologne version, like the whatever. But that uh, one was like an oil base, and mm-hmm. it just smelled different. So, um, but no, I'm saying like when you see when you think about those memories for me i have fond memories of my ex-girlfriends mostly mm-hmm. um and even though it didn't end the way that i right. wanted it to i didn't want it to end first of all but even when they did end it didn't end the way i wanted it to still i have fond memories and i don't think about the negative uh aspects of those relationships it's interesting i appreciate you saying that the fond mm-hmm. memory because i could say this after every relationship that ended a new chapter of life like literally catapulted me to a whole world that I never was exposed to unless I went through that first. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of the times I, I, I'm a, one of those individuals where I will take her and turn it into fuel. Mm-hmm. And like the one instance that I was referring to where I got hurt, I was so bad in all my boys at that time. You know, I grew up in the Temecula, Riverside County area. So we were all in the skateboarding, dirt bike riding, mm-hmm. snowboarding, extreme sports kind yeah. of thing. Um, and so all I could do with all that hurt was pour it into my love and passion for sports, which ended up literally catapulting me into a, a, a professional realm that I ran with. Mm-hmm. If I didn't have that hurt, I don't know if I would have dived in as hard as I would to and become the professional that I was. Mm-hmm. It's like, I could look back, it's like, I kind of thank you, I guess, because I'm standing on cloud nine now, like on a whole new world, seeing and experiencing aspects that I never even would have thought of if you didn't do me wrong. Because I would have been like, oh, this is so great. No, she's so pretty. Like, I would have had no desire to go achieve that if I didn't have that hurt. See, I, I wish I would have taken that route. I took the, so the route that I took. So uh, without going into too much detail, um, prior to moving to uh, the Palm Springs area, I was born and raised living in L.A. And, you know, I had my first girlfriend right after high school. She broke my heart. And I was just like, I was trying to, like, fix that broken heart. I was trying Mm -hmm. to, like, get that feeling away. And I thought, well, if I get into a new relationship and I find a new girl, the old pain will go away. Mm -hmm. Not true, by the way, um, (laughs) because it's only temporary. But then I got into a next relationship. And the next relationship was like, that was the one, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, like, super in love. And I was, like, praying to God, like, yo, this is the one that I'm going to marry for sure. That didn't work out. Then I jumped into another relationship that didn't work out. And the way she did me at the end was like horrible. So I was like trying to give love a try. Right. And I was really like, you know, God, come on now. Like, it can't be. I just want to love like someone. Dance. Right. I just want someone to love me. I want to love somebody. And it didn't work out. So after that, I went on a rampage. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't focus on career like I should have. I was mm-hmm. like, I was focusing on women. And I, let me tell you something, bro. That's when the numbers racked up. Mm-hmm. Because at that time I was at like maybe three or four, but it went. It got to thirty real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was. It was nobody. Nobody was safe, bro. <laughs> no, nobody was Turned safe. Into the Terminator. Look at all the Sarah Connors out there. All the Sarah Connors. It was come with me <laughs> if you want to get rid. <laughs> <laughs> get to the chopper. Go run. <laughs> Turned into the predator. Like, you know what? Get down. Get down. Stop too much. Dude turned into Arnold in multiple <laughs> movies. <laughs> <It's a funny laughs> thing. We were talking about the Terminator, these Arnold Schwarzenegger imitations, and everything. The funny thing with me is, I was just like Larry. Mm. I, I became a Terminator. However, <laughs> you know, you, were, you, yeah, you were the Terminator. You were the Terminator. You were the Terminator. He'll find you. That's <laughs> what he does. That's all he you does. Was, you was Orlando Constantine. <laughs> but then, thank goodness, back then, I was, oh, working, I was working at the airport, San Francisco airport. And I worked, I worked for a place So you were doing international yeah, wait, wait, no. I work in a called Flying Tigers. So FedEx eventually bought Flying Tigers, but I have flying benefits. Mm. And so being the Terminator, my homeboy Dave, which Sam Sam has met before, I said, you know, my boy, I, my boy Dave was in LA. He was like, hey man, you need to come down there. I said, no, let me use these flying benefits. Let me see what's going on down in LA. 
And when I went to LA for the first time, Cali girls, it was not. I was a Terminator. We were all Terminators, male and females, because the, the women in LA will holler at you harder than the dudes will. I mean, that well, back they, then, that ain't the case. No, no, I mean, yeah. back then, yeah. it was something else. First club I went to, I remember a place called Hollywood Live, yeah. and I saw my first celebrity there, Robert Townsend from back in the day. Some of y'all oh, yeah, remember yeah, Robert yeah, Townsend, Robert Tom- yeah. but even more Watch important you. than Robert Townsend, celebrities. I saw the Soul Train dancers at this club. And I said, oh my goodness, do y'all remember that Filipino sure one from back in the day yeah. with, the, <laughs> with the long hair? That's when I saw, and boy, let me tell you, up in LA, the sisters, national, they're all beautiful women and they will holler at you. So then, as a as a predator, I was giving them what they wanted. So, uh, so we were both happy. Don't, don't say predator, bro. Not, <laughs> not in today's context. Well, stick with Terminator. Well, yeah, Terminator. Like, I know what Predator, you meant, but yeah, I'm saying, okay. stick with Terminator. And it was stick with Resonator. <laughs> it, was, it was on and So, but the, on the other hand, though, I knew one thing I couldn't do in life is live in L.A. Because I'd have five or six kids by five or six different women. So that's why I decided not to go to school in L.A. That's what, why I went to school in San Diego. Because wow. my experience in L.A. I said, there's no way in the world well, I can live in L.A. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, there yeah, are no San Diego is not LA's, L.A.'s still on a whole different level, bro. From uh, my experience. Okay, from my okay. experience. What you got, Nate? No, I, I, I'm not getting over this, but... With that tweet, it brought me back to college. There was this girl. I'll mm. say her first name because there's a lot of names like that. And I don't know where she's at to this day. But her name was Yaeli. That was my first, you could say, real love mm. that broke my heart. Mm. <clears throat> I was 20 and I bought her a promise ring from Walmart. So oh. I wanted to, you know. So <laughs> Walmart. So sweet. Hey, that was 20 years old. I was a broke ass college. Sure, that was 60 bucks back then. Too, like. <laughs> Had 70 <laughs> bucks in my <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and we're And we're serious at now. Oh, don't joke. <laughs> <laughs> Do not disrespect this man's eight carat No, I ain't. Eight carats. You pay for those eight carats. You hitting them up? Like, <laughs> no, that was that was my Riz ring right there. I got no Riz at that. No, <laughs> no. He yeah. was in love, y'all. He was gonna get a I'll, ring somewhere. Hey, no, I had some. I had some ring some pop, ring pop from the <laughs> cracking jack. <box. laughs> <laughs> he had other options, right? He had other options, bro. <laughs> yeah, we My gonna work on that. Oh, Mark, y'all ain't holding me. I'm about to take this whole table down. <laughs> <laughs> I just joked. I just joked. No, so I got her a ring because I wanted to promise her that I'll be her first good man. Like, I promise I'll get you something better. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. yeah, ring pop. Mm-hmm. Cherry, you like cherry? No, all I do is the shit. But uh, <laughs> anyways, she worked at, she interned at Telemundo. Mm-hmm. So okay. whenever downstairs where I work at, you know, they're all Hispanics and Latinos. Right. Latinas, when we talk about Telemundo, it always brings back that memory because I dated a girl who interned at Telemundo. Mm-hmm. And she dressed like an anchor woman. Blazer, jeans, mm-hmm. juicy. Um, juicy. No. Juicy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, that was a, like horchata juicy. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> anyway, so got the ring. We had an arrangement to meet at the Cheesecake Factory at the Brea Mall nearby there. I think it's still there to this day. She never showed. Um, never show, never heard, mm. ghosted, texted her, hey, I'm here, I'm ordering you something you want. Order something just thinking she would want something to eat when she got there. Mm. Didn't get there. Never heard back from her to this day. I'm hurt. So that was, and the thing is, when I think about that tweet that he wrote, <clears throat> I also think that it might come from a place where, let's say, women or men have survived negative relationship experiences mm. and they struggle to trust a good person. Mm. And I struggle with that. Not now so much. Maybe I'm too trusting at some things just to give you the benefit of the doubt. But I'm more like, I'll trust you till you, till you screw me over. Mm-hmm. But that's the growth it taught me. So maybe some people use that bad experience or trauma as a defense mechanism. Yeah, or some people that. use that as a, a resonator mechanism. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't know. That's what that tweet brought back to me, though. I mean, I'm sitting here right now thinking what happened. Did you ever reach out to her to find out what happened? Uh, to this day, I don't know. Did you guys still work at the same place? No, no, this was back in college. Oh, back in college. So yeah, never, I was 20 years old at the time. And you never? Never heard from her since. Wow. Never heard from her. Like, okay. she was, we actually agreed in person at a hookah bar in Anaheim when I first met her that, actually, that was when I first met her, we met again there, that let's go to Cheesecake Factory, you know, just to get to know each other. But that's when I realized, maybe, she didn't know I was going to do this. No one knew. But that's when I bought the promise ring at Walmart. Wow. Which is this year, okay. Target, whatever. Don't be like she would have showed up. You would have got to Target. 
But, <laughs> but yeah, I got this, got the ring. Went to Cheesecake Factory, ate the brown bread. We all love the brown bread. The brown bread. Brown bread. It's still the, the brown bread. Yes, it yes. is. And motherfucker, I get two cheesecakes. It's a coat. So, mm-hmm. no, she never showed. Texted her, called her, didn't answer. To this day, nothing. I'm obviously over it now, right. but that was my first real hurt. And thinking how relationship traumas can hurt people, hey, you don't know how they're going to deal with it. You got to pay the price for the last man's mistake. Why, why do I got to do that? That's how I could have been. That's what I was thinking with that tweet. Mm-hmm. Defense mechanism for past relationship traumas that you take it out with someone else that they have to pay for that past man's or woman's mistake. Right. Well, let me ask you a question. And I know we got to move on to the next topic. No, no, no. We, we but I want to just talk, uh, ask you this question. Um, do you think it's uh, good or fair? Well, not I know it's not fair, but don't you think it's natural to, um, to harden up a little bit after yeah. that kind of experience? The reason why I ask is because, for example, if you touch the, the stove with the fire on, it's hot, you get burned, right? Yeah. So you're, the lesson there, there is, okay, well, don't touch the stove when it's hot, right? So that's mm-hmm. kind of like the lesson. And so you can't just go freely touching hot stoves. So when you're in a relationship and you get hurt, someone cheats on you, uh, someone does something uh, bad to you that affects you in a horrible way, of course, you're going to go to, you're going to go into the next situation with extreme caution. I think that's burning. natural. I don't think that we should be paying for the mistakes of others necessarily, uh, but I can understand why, you know, someone who I'm dating might, how do I say it? Project. Well, definitely, they definitely project. And not, the projection is the, the the bad thing, I think. Right. But I think they do have a right to pr- self-preservation. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't really want to, you know, I don't want to give that, Let's love to you right away because it's my last be relationship. relationship well, yes, but I'm just saying that well, because that's healing, right? You got to take time to to heal, and a lot of us don't take the proper right. amount of time. We're still trying to figure ourselves out. So it's like, how, right. what, what is the right time to heal? You, right. we, we have to go through that new water to figure out. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm still hurt, or okay, no, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get that. No, I get it too. I guess my question is: is it is it, if isn't it natural to go through that? And that's the maturity that it promotes. Exactly. So that hurts. Now that set you set yourself up, to, and not to enter into a relationship or even dating somebody with their defenses totally wide uh, wide open, mm-hmm. you're going a little bit more cautious now. Because I really think about it, like who goes into a just a date with thinking all this stuff is going to happen. So you're a little bit more cautious now, and you're going to take a little bit more slower, so you won't get hurt the way they got hurt that one time. And that 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 I think right there is the maturity. That's the growth right there. <clears throat> I, I look at it a little different. Um, you know that about me. Of course. To give you some. Uh, I'll be like, Sam, the purple. sky is blue. Like, you sure it's not purple? No, it's, it's blue. blue. It's blue. Okay. I, I, I see the obvious a lot. It's but, crazy. But there's something else to consider. You you all mentioned healing. Yeah. If you go into another relationship and you haven't healed, right. then you're, you're setting up the new relationship for failure 100%. right out the gate. Because if you're not 100% genuinely yourself, mm-hmm. Then they're not going to see you who for who Larry really is, right. and so you might be handicapping that future relationship because you're still healing from past hurt. Mm-hmm. So the bigger question is, or the better question is, yeah, it's natural to go into a new relationship defensive, but then why go into a new relationship? Well, not defensive. defensive. I meant cautious. Cautious. All, there you go. That's cautious. a better word. Cautious. Right. Yeah, that's that's cautious. Different. Yeah. Well, but that's what you said, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're 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 in defense st- stance. Like I don't want to get hurt, so you got your your guard up. Well, then you can't go into that relationship mm-hmm. because you're guarded. No, you're, you're guarded. I'm, I said that a little bit differently. You, no, you come in cautious, and as the relationship matures, your caution seems to go down a little bit as it grows. But right. if you, it, it, but okay, <clears throat> but that new person may not come in cautious at all. Grow, cautious at all. You know? They might be going in head first. Mm-hmm. They might be jumping in deep into the pool like, I'm ready for love. I don't have baggage. So Ooh, because you, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. <laughs> I, I, think think I, I, outside yeah, your yeah. box. Think think outside. When you first met your wife, were you defensive? Were you cautious? Were you dealing with past hurts? Definitely was cautious. she? Definitely so what cautious. was she? Definitely cautious. But we you dived in, she? though. You dived in half. We were open, yeah. but we were cautious. And, and that's what I'm talking we about. With no expectation. Let's see where this goes. Then, what then, then to me, you weren't guarded. You went in with no expectations. Yeah, right. With that's the guard, but no expectations. Because when you first enter a relationship and you have expectations that this may be the person, I think that's the setup for the failure. I, I look at it differently because I think when you don't have expectations, you're not guarded. 
You're not putting anything on anyone. You're free. Mm-hmm. You, you, you don't have any weight for anyone to carry because that's when relationships do fail when you put expectations out there because my last somebody did something and I don't want you to do that. That's an expectation. When you're free as a bird and you're just like, hey, let's just fly and see where we go. That's not weight. You're not carrying anything. And so what Larry's Larry's describing is the lack of healing in between that journey with someone new. So, for example, if open your hands, if I took from you, Mm -hmm. you like, damn, you took from me. Now close your hands. Now you can't receive anything. Right. So when you're guarded, you're 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 knuckled up. Mm -hmm. And so you but now if you open your hands back, yeah, they're going to always be someone that comes to take. But there's also someone that can give more than what you lost. See, and, see, and so you have to remain open. But that comes from healing. I see it a little bit different. Because even with the hand thing, I wouldn't come in like this. I wouldn't come out like this. I'd come in like you this. Can't I can't put yeah, nothing in that hand. Yeah, but I still it. can't put yeah. all that I want to give you in that hand. I can't give you this cup to hold. Yeah. I can put the keys in uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why take the keys when you get the cup? Yeah. Yeah. But that's what, because you, get, the keys you get that cup. It's likely to spill. That's why you keep it a little bit tighter. You're gonna drink it fast. I, I can't hold a cup like that. My hand no. rolled up. I gotta be open to receive it in okay. the first place. Okay. And that's all I'm talking okay. about. And that's I think, why I look I'm at it a little different. I'm gonna come and piggyback off of where Orlando is coming from, um, just from the set of expectations. Mm-hmm. Because what I've had to walk in my journey is to realize that there are expectations, they're unspoken expectations. Unspoken. Yeah. And if they're unspoken expectations and you are at a place where you're you're half clenched, you and you're not you're not at a space or comfortable to share those unspoken mm-hmm. expectations. You're going to fail. The mm-hmm. the uh, the your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever it may be, is going to fail because they don't know what that expectation is, and they're 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 trying to please you, and they can't hit they can't hit the target because they don't know what that expectation is, because you set that bar and you're not willing to share. So it's like I want to give you these flowers, but you, your hands are clenched. I can't. You can't even accept them. Yeah. It's like I don't like flowers. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. You didn't tell me. Yeah. <laughs> My last some some gave, always gave me flowers and found out he was giving other people flowers. You know. So, <laughs> right. You know. It's like. So yeah, I don't want flowers no more. But you think you're doing a nice right. gesture? Mm-hmm. So, I want some seeds chocolate. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't. You told me we're, that. We're all right, but you're right where you are at that time. To self preserve your life and 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 remain and eventually get back to an open heart. But I like what y'all said. So I know maybe... We, we, no, that's all good. Because I think what I want to get to with that tweet is the the conclusion. How we get there is I like to pr- promote a more understanding and... Of the journey? Journey and mm-hmm. it respecting the individuality mm-hmm. of men and women. Because we all share a desire for a healthy, loving relationship. We all share that. At a certain time. At a life. certain time. Where the, <laughs> where the fists are closed time. or your palms are open. At the end of the day, I think we all share that because there's risk in being alone. There's risk in being together with someone. And speaking of that risk, I'm gonna, it's going to segue into this next little devolve. You know, uh, I don't know if Robbie can play that clip. Marriage. Mm-hmm. Are you? Are you cool? Are you? Do you want to get married? I feel like I'm married as soon as I commit to you, because I'm a lawyer person. If I feel like, what you mean you're a lawyer person? Then? I am. Nigga, that ain't how law. You that's not how it works. It is in my heart. Because it's between me, you, and God. Not paperwork. I do it. I have a wedding for you. I ain't just ain't doing that paperwork. Do you sign contracts that don't benefit you? No. I, I ain't either. Stay woke. <laughs> <laughs> that was me back in the day. That was definitely me. That was me before I got married to my wife. Mm. Out of the way, I ain't doing that paperwork. Yeah, I showed that paperwork. I said, we don't need to get married. I said, I am as good. Been, been real talk, and we've been married 26 years now. Um, and I told her, I told her now, I even to this day, I don't think we needed to get married. I said, I am just as dedicated to you now as I was back then before we got married. I saw the, the ceremony as just signing some paperwork. And now, granted, some legal obligations, no doubt about that, but nothing in our relationship has changed that now that we got married. Besides the legal obligation, I'm still dedicated. I love her just as much. And, and you know, my attitude was like, we could have saved some money on that wedding in Las Vegas when we got married. I think that worked for you. I don't know if it could work for the average couple, though. Well, there's a difference yeah. between the wedding and marriage. They, they seem to go together, but it's, they're different. 
Why are you laughing? I'm serious. Like, a wedding is just a, a celebration of the decision you've already made. But marriage is different. You could definitely, because people get married all the time without having, they go to the courthouse. Or they go to right. Vegas and get married with uh, Elvis or whatever. That's, that's, not, that's right. what we did. We went to Vegas. So, see, that's exactly. Yeah. So, that's not, you know, you, you could say it's a wedding, but, you know, it's whatever. It's, it, it's different between a wedding and a marriage. Well, what happens before a wedding, though? The decision's made. Who do you ask for that decision? Are you saying that, are you referring, like, how men ask for Women for the hand for a woman's hand in marriage. That yeah, but before you do that, is it traditionally you ask the, the woman's father. parents? Well, you're, yeah. So if you're a traditional person, you know, you, you ask <laughs> you ask, the, you ask the parents. I was terminated. But uh, you know you don't need to do that in today's. You know, I guess it, it depends on your culture. It depends on you know your tradition and in you know from a man's perspective, it depends on the parents. You know, and that's the conversation you would have with her before. Like way before, you know, like now that you're proposing to her, you would just say, hey, babe, you know, if I was going to marry you, you know, what do your parents expect? Am I supposed to ask them first or? Yeah, and she'll tell you. Yeah. Well, she should, because like, she just... leaves her parents' house to go into your house. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the traditional way. And I'm not against tradition. I'm all for tradition. And generally speaking, parents like me. Generally speaking. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had, I've been in relationships with parents. My parents, parents like, can't whatever. stand you, bro. Yeah. He's your like, parents? Like, what do you mean? Oh, you're, I was like, you're, your mama like me, Sam. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, do you guys, did you, did you ask your, did you ask Keisha's parents? Um, no, I didn't. Um, Keisha comes from a divorce home uh-huh. like myself. And so the, the access wasn't there, but respect to, Jose Hopkins, he's been an amazing support to our marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I could do it over, I would ask him. Um, as a matter of fact, our 20th is coming up, and I will ask him, can I have another 20 years? You mm-hmm. know, so this is going live before it, it, it gets there, but Shout before we the get there. But, um, you know, I, I think what the guy said on Shannon, Shannon Sharp's um, podcast, he said in his view he did. to him, it is in my heart. And, and, and there's a lot of that in this world where yep. we, we make decisions based on how we feel, but it's not biblical. It's not legal. It's how he feels. And we know our emotions change on a lot of things. Yeah, that's what I life. Yeah. Uh, Orlando already teed it up. It's how he used to feel and see about things about marriage. So we have to be careful about our emotions because um, he be he may be blocking a real blessing from God. By not ordaining his marriage through God's lens, but through his own religion. His well, no, own, that's an interesting thing, though. Because... His own wants and feel, because with, with a union through God, there's you're blessings the that come that's... You're in the that's, covenant. Yeah, you're now in his circle. So he has things for you that you're going to receive through your marriage that he won't receive because he's not married. No. So wait, I have a question. Okay. I, I really have to interject here. Um, I'm going to set a stage, and I'm going to take... Big brother. That's what I call Uncle Sam, government, big brother. Whatever. Okay. Okay. He said he, he'd he have a, a wedding. Yeah, that's that's the ordained that, guy. Right. Me. You can have a a priest, a pastor, set, you can set the is stage. Legal, you have your but people, hold on. Is it legal? Have, you, have, you, have, you, you have, and here's the biblical side. You have your witnesses. Mm-hmm. And he, he even said, my, my woman. He, he said no paperwork. No paperwork. But, no but paperwork, but paperwork granted, refers to legal, legal like to the right, state. To this, but here's the thing. If I'm standing before my pastor, okay. my wife, then, then, and my family, and my I don't care what Uncle Sam says. Yeah, I yeah. got me, he got but, my wife. But he ended it with, I won't sign anything that won't benefit me. So he just ruined the whole thing. It it's how you present the whole package, not just three-fourths of it. He's okay. saying, you don't benefit me to go the full way legally. State government and and God's ordained law in oh, he, His he word. Says, he says, you know. So when you leave God's whole ordination out of the the equation, what God's called into reality, now you're you're making your own way. Okay, and that's why I don't get down with that because now you're making your own reasons for how you feel. Well, the icing on the cake is even today's culture, and we'll just say in California, you together for five years. You married, Kamala, <laughs> or, yeah. yeah. or, or is it a situation ship? If you're together for five years and you guys are not married, is it a situation ship? Because there's Depends. no title, there's no label. No, I think when he said contract, he's talking about the legal contract, a 
according to the state, right? Right. And so there's this huge debate online between other podcasters and just people who talk about it, where the the question is, does marriage, legal marriage, benefit uh, men more or women more? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the, you know, the debate. And I think that's probably what he was referring to when he says, would you sign a contract that doesn't benefit you? Because the argument is that marriage today doesn't really benefit men from a legal standpoint. Why? Because most divorces are actually initiated by women, mm-hmm. according to statistics. And then out of those marriages, if, if children are involved, uh, the woman wins the case that's in yeah. custody. That's, that's true. That's and, true. And, that meant, and that basically means that men actually pay more than women do in child support. So it, from that standpoint, it feels to men, most men, like marriage is a beneficial to me. It's, but it's not, it's not the marriage. Marriage is beneficial in a lot of ways, even in legal ways. But divorce, <laughs> there's, a difference. there's a difference. So marriage is beneficial. Divorce is hard for anybody. And, and and I've never heard of a smooth divorce. Like that divorce is awesome. I've never heard that. Not to say that there aren't my cases. When I, when my I was married, I had all yeah. my hair. When my I got divorced, I lost all my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see that. Yeah, my mom, didn't take, my dad, my mom didn't take my dad to the cleaners when they divorced. She didn't even take out the money. Mm. Yeah, I've seen she just took child support. I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that that doesn't yeah. exist. I'm just saying you never really hear of smooth sailing. There's something divorces. else I also want to put on the table because you were talking about the legalities of things. Yeah. There's also an aspect where, I mean, we'll call it for what it is, there are also those prenups in these equations too. Yeah. And there's a part of the element where it's like, oh, I'll marry you, but I want a prenup. It's like, if that comes across the table, then we're not in this all together. I don't because that's an ex- that. No, because here's the thing. That's I can a tough say one. This. That's a tough okay, one. Okay, I'm... That's I'm, a good point. Though. I've been married. September will be 15 years. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Congratulations. Still, like, I still feel like I know you're probably dumb father. Like, dang, 15 years. Right. I was like, whoa. Well, you know, it's um, I still feel like I'm in my honeymoon stage yeah. at times. Oh, yeah. Um, and the, the crazy thing is, and I'm a little personal. Um, at one point in time, we had the kind of the conversation. It's like, wait, are, you want to prenup in this com- this aspect of it? And it was interesting because when I proposed, I literally had nothing. I literally had nothing. I lost my job the week I was going to propose to her. Okay? So I was coming. I was the scrub. I was rolling in my friend's passenger seat. I didn't have a job. I had literally like maybe 50 bucks to my name because I spent it all on a ring. And then I'm like, hey, wait, and we, 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 I no, what are you going to take from yeah, me? I got nothing. Up, right? He's like, <laughs> you can take this <laughs> right? old ass like, laughing like, champion in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> But the interesting thing is we had to have that truthful conversation and it hurt. It really hurt because to me, that's an extra strategy. To me, that means you don't believe in this dynamic of what God wants to bring together. Uh, no, this is where I, I was I, at I, in I my life and what I, I experienced. Let me give you another side to this. I've seen the other side to this. I had a, I had one of my partners. He was in the Marines. Okay. He got married to this woman and they got married and it's what it is. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about the legal obligations, this is where it really hit Their marriage didn't work out. Okay. They only were married for like three or four years in the Marines. Um, they should have been able to go their separate ways. But she took him to court. And to this day, until until he dies, she gets 40% of her retirement benefits mm-hmm. from the Marine Corps mm-hmm. for a marriage that lasted three or four years. Mm-hmm. That is the issue. That's where I think a prenup is. I don't think it's right that uh, a woman or a man be married three or four years and the other spouse or the other partner gets to take Everything you earned, uh, not everything, thirty or forty percent of what you earned before the marriage even happened. That's the that's the, the problem I have. Especially with that. today, right? Because like, you know, when these laws were put in place at that time, what would what did marriage look like, and yeah, and, when, and, and, and family, what did the dynamics of the family look like? Fifty percent. Well, men were the breadwinners, typically mm-hmm. speaking. Mm-hmm. Women either were not allowed to work, yeah, or if they were allowed to work, they, was, they, yeah. their, their jobs were like limited. Like they, right. they, they had very little access to certain types of work. So women almost had to, not almost, they really literally had to depend on their husbands. Mm-hmm. You had to get married when you were 18, 19, 20 years old, right? And when you got married, you were staying at home. And if you did have a part-time job, you were a secretary making less than minimum wage yeah. as a woman, right? Stereotype so yeah. exactly. But yeah. now there are the workforce is heavy. Cool. 
it's more than equal. More it's than heavy. Equal. Yes, like women. Yes. women are more educated than yep. men across the board. They yep. have more they degrees than we yep. do. Yep. Yep. They outnumber us. There's like four to, four to one. Yep. Uh, and so they're heavy in the workforce. All my boss, well, not all, but majority of the bosses at my current job are women. Yeah. Uh, uh, the last three or four jobs I've had, all the people in power. Shout out to the women out there. Yeah, yeah. Shout out oh, to the women. They were all they were all women, right? So in the workforce, it's a little bit more than 50-50. And some women are making more. I know there's a big debate about how men make more, but that, that's another debate for another day. But my point is, women don't necessarily need men anymore for that, right? Just the way our society is set up. So now, but still, by and large, women, like I said, win most of the custody battles and they, and they pay less in child support. Absolutely true. And so I don't think that it's really fair necessarily because it's like, well, hold on, you got a full-time job. <laughs> you are educated. You have a degree. You're more educated than me. You make a little bit more than me. When I get the divorced, you get to keep the kids. And you make more and you take a lot of my money. Oh, that's yeah. a little that's a little tough. Two wrongs well. two wrongs don't make it right, but for years women have been getting a shaft and the men had the yes. total advantage. Secondly, I think I see a very different uh, an aspect of it as different. Having separation of church and state. When we talk about marriage and marriage ceremonies, all the, the benefits, the pros and cons that come along with that, you really you know, Michelle and I, my wife and I, we break it down. If we really look at marriage and we're all going to get older, all of us are aging, you know, we got, uh, I have more days uh, behind me probably than I have in front of me. And in the end, um, I'm confident and I'm happy that I have a wife and I have a partner. And if something happens to me, I walk outside and I get hit by a bus mm -hmm. and somebody has to make a decision. I mean, when we talk about marriage, they get to decide if we live or die. If I get hit by a bus and I got a 50-50 chance, me and my wife, we've already talked about it. I said, if I have a 30% chance or better, keep me alive. If it goes below 30%, let me go. And we both said, uh, mine's 30 versus 50. <laughs> so, uh, so, and, but so we're talking about a spouse or a partner who will make a decision on whether you live or die and vice versa. So when he talks about, when he talks about, well, I don't sign no contract that doesn't benefit me, I would hate to be sitting there and have somebody I don't even know, care about or love, make the decision on I, if I die or live or what happens to me. That's if good. something, if, if I can't make the decision on my own. So I think we need to look at the complexity and, a little bit more universal of what that really means. And that is the biggest advantage I see of being married, knowing you got somebody who has your back. Let's look at that complexity. He don't say no contracts that benefit him. So there's risk on his end. Huge risk. Married. And I don't think he even considered that. No, there's risk. There's risk in everything we do. Right. So let's say his risk. We all can agree a man's risk in getting married is financially. You know, you're giving up some level of dependence or independence to cater to a household. Well, one thing I don't think we talk on is what is a woman's risk in getting married? Are there any risks for a woman? Oh, there are times, yeah. Yeah. She can risk her financial independence. Absolutely. She can risk her travel aspirations, her career goals to attend to a house. So she, she might not be able to take that promotion because it'll, it'll, it'll conflict with her household. And it might cause resentment and feelings of unfulfillment. What do you mean we make conflict with the household? Just to make sure we define that. What do you mean conflict with the household? Like, let's say like, she takes on like, like a job. Like let's that. say she takes on a promotion that requires her to be to travel. Okay. Better pay, income, pay the bills. We all got to pay bills, okay. and, right? Romance and finance, in my opinion, that's her. That's very important in a relationship. Okay. But how does it conflict in the household? She's traveling. Can't be home with the kids. Husband wants to come home to a hot plate or something like that. Can't spend time with the husband. Let's say you have kids, you're spending more time with the kids and date nights with with each other. It's easy to get carried away with kids than it is to, oh man, I'm feeling unfulfilled because these kids' mess are met, me, but not mine. So what's the, that's why I was asking, like the risk of the woman to get married. Well, that's a, I think it depends on the roles in the household. That is more of, I think, also a traditional thing that, yeah. you know, the wife takes care of the kids and this and that. For a while, when I have no problem saying, when I, when I graduated San Diego State and I, had, I was in between careers, I was a stay-at-home dad. My my wife, she traveled. Yeah. She worked for she worked for as an insurance adjuster, doing all kinds of traveling. Yeah. I was at home with our child, changing all the diapers and doing all of that stuff. Wow. And I didn't have a problem doing it. It's my baby. I'll take care of it. I'll do it. So I don't have any problem with role reversal. But I wasn't like, hey, you need to be home and have a hot plate ready for me or anything yeah. like that. It was me who actually had dinner ready for her, and I was totally cool with that. Yeah. But. When I found my job and everything, that's when the city was old enough. She, we got babysitters, we got people to watch her and everything that goes along with that. I think marriages now have to be more, so much more incorporated in teamwork. And this is your role, this is my role. Parents 
and especially with the um, the dual income that's needed yeah. to just survive now in California. For anybody Ooh. that afford to have a house in California, if both both the uh, parties aren't working, both parents aren't working, you're gonna be renting, and they're gonna keep going up on your rent every every, every dog on month. Yeah, and do you know how expensive it is to have a kid now in California too? So I think it's it's incumbent now. I mean, if anything, my wife is sitting on the couch or doing that, those traditional roles. I say, oh no, baby, you got to go and get a little, get you a little part time job, mm-hmm. add into this household um, income because it's absolutely a requirement and necessity now that now in today's times. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I got a, I got a deeper question for you, Nick. Um, you asked the question, what's her risk? Mm-hmm. Her risk is marrying the man that's that. She thought he was somebody that he's not. Uh, that's another risk. Perpetrator. That could be a man's risk. So too. my wife and I had this conversation about a week ago, and we were celebrating a promotion I got, and just really Congrats, sweet. Thank Congratulations. You. Congratulations. And I said thank you for journeying, doing this whole journey with me all these many years, and the good and the bad of it. And she said you always saw the potential in me. So I wasn't who I am today. Right. Who she thought I was. 20 plus Back years then. ago, but she was willing to do life with me in hopes that I would become and honor the marriage and do all the things that women ex- hope their men be or are. Mm-hmm. So the risk is women marry men all the time off of potential. Doesn't mean that man ever ever reaches it. Doesn't mean he, he truly honors the marriage. Doesn't mean he truly pours into the household. They're, they're taking a risk. They're taking a leap of faith. Well, because because a man is supposed to be the leader of the house, and I always bring this up, but we're not always ready to lead. Correct. I don't have P Diddy money. I don't have celebrity income. At least you don't have P Diddy ways. But the, but, <laughs> but but with that said, maybe I did. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's the old me. So I think women take huge risk in putting their lives in 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 alignment with the man that's supposed to be leading. And if they don't, mm-hmm. what does that turn out? How does that come out in the wash? They gave us children. It provided a, a home full of love and the man is still acting a fool. There's a risk in that for women. They don't get what they thought they were going to get out of us. No, I'm going to play the other side. Oh, I got it's a two-way street, though. Right? That, he just asked about the risk that they take. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But don't you think we as males, men, no, we like, we take risks too, but, yes. he, but his Most question risk. was, what risk does women take? Because okay. yeah. okay. we talk about the financial obligation or the financial liability when we're financial divorcing divorce. and what we lose out of the deal if it doesn't work. So I'm, I'm answering his question on what do women risk going into a marriage? And that's it. They risk not marrying a man that's not who they thought he was. But that's a beautiful well, thing I love. So like More than it ever comes. comes. About your potential. He should saw your potential. Yeah. Michelle saw the same potential in me, but I have no problem saying I was broke, especially coming out of school and everything. We were broke. And the beautiful thing about it, we talked about it as husband and wife. She said, she know, she said, no matter what, Orlando, no matter what, I knew you were the one for me because I could be totally broke with you and still be happy because that's what it was about, my happiness. Mm-hmm. Michelle and I, you know, I don't know anybody at this table, but Michelle and I, we were so destitute at one time. We weren't sure where our next meal was coming from. And as a team, as a team, we found change in a couch, change in the cars and everything. The only thing I saved was by grace. Of course, by grace by God. We ended up saving about eighteen, nineteen dollars. And thank goodness we saw a commercial coming on. And it was five two you get two big back two Big Macs for five dollars at McDonald's. And I kid you not, that held us over for about seven days until like we both got our paychecks. We were that destitute. But you know what? I look back at that with pride now because we did it together and we both risked each other and we struggled through it together. Now, if that ain't, and, 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 if that ain't somebody who's down to ride with you, I don't know what is. I wouldn't trade that for anything. But that's amazing that yes. you have that story and that legacy with your wife and that she's journeyed with you yes. through the highs and the lows. My potential. Because of my potential. But my potential mm-hmm. wasn't about money. Right. Okay. It wasn't about providing. It was about us being able to live and grow together. Because again, all of our parents at one point or another got, you know, in God's order of things, they all went to the, um, um, to the altar with the right intentions. And some of it worked for them. Some right. of it didn't. Right. Um, but we were still journeying together. So that's where she saw the potential of us being a loving couple together all these many years. The money comes and goes. It wasn't about the money. 
we're just celebrating that this season things are looking up right. in so many ways. Right. But it, it was deeper than just financial providing because again, that's a risk women take. Is is a man? Is this man going to be able to provide? Is he going to be a loving husband? Is he going to raise yes. our children right? Is he going to yes. be an outstanding citizen? Is he going to be healthy for the rest of his days? It's so many risks that you said traditionally, Larry. Women were marrying into these marriages that they were staying at home and they were so dependent, almost childlike. And no disrespect, but that's the way the world was. It was that leave us the beaver set world, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so now, where we have options on both yeah. sides, yeah. It, it is still a risk for women because, again, they're seeing society, society speaking. It's, yeah. They look at biblically speaking that they're subordinate to the man and the man is supposed to do right in all these areas. Well, he's supposed supposed to. The man's supposed to be supposed, 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 supposed to. Too. Yeah. And, that's, yeah. and that's the risk they take. Yeah. It's not having that outstanding gentleman to lead the charge. Yeah, and so look, you guys, most of you at this table are married. Uh, yeah, we've got married three, three out of five are married. No, I, went, yeah. I went through a divorce. Yeah, yeah. you were before. Yeah. I'm not married, I've never been, right? My perspective is this, and I can't take full credit because a friend of mine, uh, Evan, um, wrote a, a screenplay. And uh, there was a line that he wrote in the screenplay that like, it just, and I can't even, the way he wrote it was more beautiful than what I can explain. But basically the character in there in the script said, when you get married, you're marrying three persons. You're marrying the person that that person was, who they are today, and who they will be tomorrow. And those are three distinct people. You're marrying her today because of who she is today. Right. And, you, and this is who you fell in love with. But you're marrying who she used to be also because there might be some untreated trauma that, you know, will right. probably, you know, life issues. Experience yeah. and stuff, issues, issues that right. might come back and all that. But then you're also committing to the person that she will be in the future because change is inevitable. Change happens. Right. And this, I'm saying she, but, you know, this goes for both people, both like sides. on both right. sides, the husband and the wife. You're marrying that whoever that person is going to be in the future. So the question is, are you willing to take that chance and that risk of who this person might be because we all change over time. Maybe the core of us, you know, doesn't really change, but there are life lessons and there are things yes. that we go through where it's completely different when we you're evolve. 70 and 60 evolve. years yeah. old, right? <laughs> yeah, you evolve from when you were 20 or 30 or 40. Right. So there's, already, there's risks involved. The problem that I have is emotions. Emotions are fickle. <laughs> mm. Okay, they're fickle. Do you define that? Yes. So right now, I feel good. Right, I'm with my boys. I'm happy with y'all. Yeah. Uh, right. So I feel good. I'm on this podcast. There's people right. listening, and maybe our views are going up. Click subscribe. Um, <laughs> but I feel good. Right. But then you know, when on on the drive home, somebody might cut me off in traffic. And my feel good goes turns to anger real quick because I do suffer from road Changes rage. Changes like a little John anger. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> I right. do suffer from road rage when we drive in a slow lane drive. Okay. See, <laughs> yeah. I'm, about, I'm about to suffer from Sam rage in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you know how to put my buttons. Um, no, but see, but but that's exactly so. Feelings change, and I don't like that about human beings. Mm. We are not really consistent. We're, we're consistently inconsistent in terms of our emotions. And that's what kind of scares me about all being in any relationship because even with uh, our boys, right? Uh, I might say something innocently, but really piss you off because I offended you in some way. Now we can work it out and we're boys. We can, you know, forgive each other for that. But our, our emotions change in that moment. And when you're in a relationship with someone, her feelings might change, right? And she, she might want something different just because she feels like it. There's no real true rhyme or reason. It's that's a risk. That's a scary thing. And I think a lot of you know, I, I don't want to make it about men or women, but I think a lot of people go with their emotions, and that's a dangerous. That's a dangerous thing. But anyway, what do you guys think about that? I, you know, it kind of seems like the challenge of a long term commitment. Well, let me explain. So, what if you fall out of love in that? What if you guys just get stuck in the mundane task of work, pay bills, go home, I'm too tired. Work, pay bills, go home, I'm too tired. Weekend, I need to rest up for Monday. Work and repeat. Where you're not pouring into that relationship because you're just too tired of that mundane task and you fall out of love and 
biblically speaking, that's not a reason for divorce. There's no irreconcilable Agreed. differences. Agreed, yeah. But that is a challenge in today. Other than infidelity. But yeah. yeah, that's true. That infidelity is, is, you can divorce for that, biblically speaking. But that is a challenge of marriage and long-term commitment, is falling out of love. When one person grows, for the better or for worse, you have to deal with that, or vice versa. But let's say you're growing because you want to do something, and your other partner, male or female, is bringing you down. So that is a risk worth diving into. And you guys have been married for, you know, 10 plus years. Yeah. Shit, my marriage was fired. I got tired. So uh, that's something to talk about. How do you guys work on challenges of long-term commitment and reigniting that spark? Because that is a risk when you get married as well. Just the mundane. It's a slightly different topic from the question I was asking. So I, really, I want to get back to that. But yeah. I want to know how you have changed or how your wives have changed from when you guys were, you know, how were you when you got married, Sam? You were what, 28, 26. 26, and, and so, and, and Keisha was the same age? Yeah, but roughly she's a year behind me. Right, so how has she changed from her 26-year-old self to, she still looks 26, but I know she's 30, right? <laughs> she's 30. She's, she's awesome. <laughs> 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 I'm not taking that bait. <laughs> Well, I'm just, I'm just saying. Trying to get her to come home to an angry I know. Like, well, hell no. Nah. She ain't gonna love me. She's gonna love me, so not after this conversation. She'll be you like, you will not be invited back for Dang. Thanksgiving. I'm I love coming. you. I love you, Keish. We hungry. Oh, oh man, no. that's a loaded question because um, yeah. <laughs> she's not the same person, but her core is still the same. Yes. She's always been loving. Her foundation. Her foundation. Yeah. Okay. Soft spoken. It's never about her. She never brings any attention. She's not seeking worldly attention. Mm. She's. She loves family, she loves life, and she doesn't need the finer things. She's she's very content with life and grateful for it. Um, how she's changed is um, she's able to focus on herself. And a lot of ways she grew up, she grew up fast, having to take care of others that wasn't her responsibility, but she had to she pick had to up the baton and run with it. Mm-hmm. And now she gets to finally settle into what she likes to do, which where she wants to go, where she doesn't want to go, um, being front and center in the home and not being the, spreading herself thin. That's how she's changed. And there's many more ways we can go down this rabbit right, hole, right. but um, I've seen her grow in herself mm-hmm. to just be naturally herself and not stress over things that are out of her control that she was trying to fix and handle. And I'm so grateful to see her enjoying the day to day versus stressing over the day to day. And how have you changed um, in that same time period? My, from 26 to 30. I think, I think my change has come from just my walk with God. Um, I credit Him for all the things that are going good. And I credit Him for the things that I need to improve upon because He has shown me myself in my errors, in my ego, in my ways. Um, but I think what's helped me, I'm, I'm more confident, but more humble. Mm. And um, I I know I don't have the strength. That's where I see my superpower. It's not me, it's him. Mm. I've, I've settled into him being my leader and commander in chief. And so that's where I've grown. And knowing I don't have the ability to carry this weight daily, I need to rely on him. Mm. Yeah, and, and that's been works. a 10 year journey of a transformation of understanding that. And what's helped me in our marriage is understanding where she lacks is probably my fault. Uh, our relationships are mirror images of ourselves, and mm-hmm. we don't realize that as men, mm-hmm. that we think, oh, they're not doing this, we're not doing that. Well, the Bible commands us to love our wives. Mm-hmm. So if you're not That's loving her, thank the you. The way made, Christ yeah, loved the church. Ephesians, yeah. Christ loved the church. So if you're not I loving on them, right? we yeah. think stereotypically women are supposed to be the nurturers the lovers and mm-hmm. showcase that and that's fine but God ordained men to love wives correct mm-hmm. so we're not showcasing love to our women why you think you're not getting any affection or any respect. intimacy or respect which is our love language mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so it's reciprocal it's it's checks and balances so I've learned how to mirror love to her better than me just expecting to receive it without giving it. So um, I've grown in so many ways in that sense, and it's been helpful. So it sounds like you've not only changed, but you've matured and changed in a positive direction, you've grown. I hope so. I hope so. The, the, the saga continues. 
you know, check with me on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You said emotions change and mm-hmm. stress mm-hmm. And with life and things like that. So yeah, I have my ebb and flows and ups and downs. So trust me, I haven't mastered anything. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to figure out how to stand on that pole like Daniel son <laughs> and, and, and kick and land back on that one leg, you know, so I can take out Johnny, the devil. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sweep the leg, sweep yeah. the leg, you know, it come to sweep the leg, you know, life comes at you fast. And furious, Wax on, but, wax off. Yeah. So I'm still in the, in the lab working. What about you, Ron? Same thing. Have you, how have you guys have changed or, you know, over time? I'm, I'm going to have to just rewind just a second because Sam spoke serious truth. And Sam and I had a conversation about, I would almost say six weeks ago, mm. that he wrecked me because mm. what he said is true. We are to love our wives. We are to be the head of our family. And there was aspects of that that he said, hey, real talk, you're just receiving what you're putting out. And that hurt when I heard that. Mm-hmm. I had to process that. And I'm like, wait, no, I'm Reflections. not standing. I'm like, no, I'm doing this right. And he's like, we had a similar conversation. Right. Like, you're, talking, you're talking about, uh, you and I going to have to talk, bro. Because you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Things have changed. Um, changes in the wind. So um, I commend you, Sam. Actually, if y'all don't know, like, the gents at this table are, like, and the, they're elites. And I don't give that title lightly. Um, and I love I love Larry. I love Nate. You come into the, the atmosphere recently, but thanks for having me. You two, you, y'all done messed me up for the better. Amen. <laughs> okay. Um, Amen. And and I and to go back to what you were asking, uh, Larry. A lot has changed over the last fifteen years. But what I've learned about me and what I've seen me is, and I want to say it's also positive and a negative. And God's working on me. I am more ambitious and driven than ever before. Um, I aspire and I have higher expectations of myself because I've been fortunate to see what God has seen me and I know I can do better. I should have been doing better. I've been holding back for my family and they deserve better. And so for me, um, I've had to face myself and look be you know, Michael Jackson, big man in the mirror, because who I was seeing, I thought I would I, I, I had all my st- stuff together. Mm-hmm. I was almost gonna I was almost gonna cut stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um but I thought I had all my stuff together. You know, I'm like I'm achieving these goals and I have all these accolades and you know for where I'm at in life at my age, I'm doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. And to realize it's all meaningless. It's all dirt on a rag. And I think for me, now that I'm able to see these things and realize that I have not been given, I have not been loving my family the way Christ has wanted me to. Right. That's forced me because I, once I once I know that I know, that's not acceptable. Like I have, I better change. If I don't change, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have issues with me, mm-hmm. and that's not acceptable because. He deserves better. I serve a God who saved me from so much mm-hmm. and pulled me out of so much crap. Mm-hmm. I better serve him. Mm-hmm. And if I can't bring my best to the table, which he gave me one of the kids, he gave me a loving wife. So if I'm not going to step to the table and bring my best, like, I don't deserve to enter his atmosphere. Mm-hmm. So, so I, and I say that because... I've been running with Sam now for three years. I've been running with Lando for at least two. No, I take it back. I've been running with you for four and a half years. Mm-hmm. I've been running with you for three years. Mm-hmm. And ever since I've met, and, and you you were in this atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. You were in the station with him. Yeah. 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 Um, no joke, man. I am not who I was when I met Larry. And I'm not who I was when we broke bread back in Colorado. Mm-hmm. I'm not the man. Granted, I still we still have a lot of work to do. Yeah. But I'm not that same man when I sat down at Cheesecake Factory. So by God's grace, I know I've been growing. And this last month and a half, mm-hmm. I am not that man. And I was like, look at stuff. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, oh, trust me. God shows up in all the funny yes, places. The funniest places. <laughs> Liquor sells in all. Liquor store in <laughs> India. So, I mean, so changes happen. Changes happen. Changes happen. And, I, and I could say this. That change has been hard. 
it, it's messed me up. I've had to deal with emotions that I hate. I hate emotions. I hate feelings. And I say that, and I don't say that lightly. Because they like, be lying to you. They be mm-hmm. lying to you. Be like, oh, you feel, no, you don't. You feel like crap. Feel it. Own it. And walk through it. Because it's his strength that will carry you through. You know, so all that be said, I know he's still, the work he started, he's not done yet. Yeah. So I know I'm changing. My wife, I have to give that to God. And she's grown and she's changed. But I can't expect her to change and me not change. So I'll leave it at that. Okay. All right. That leaves you, Lando. Hmm. The only other married person on this, yeah, on this cast. Oh, um, Mandalorian. Over the Mandalorian. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> Show us the way, bro. <laughs> this is where we're go grew at. Mm-hmm. You know what? It's, it's just been about growth. It's been about God. Just like these, these two brothers said, it's been about God. I was the most selfish person when we got married. I was totally dedicated my wife, to my wife, but I didn't understand the foundation of what being a man was and what it meant to really lead a family or do any of those things. I was so messed up when we got married. I had my bank account. She had her bank account. I expected her to pay the bills, but I wouldn't give her my account information so she can get the money out of my account to pay the bills. She was like, well, how am I going to pay the bills if I can't get the account yeah, information? That, that makes sense. And I was just like, what am I doing? I didn't fully trust. I have never given anybody <laughs> my bank account yet, my right. bank account information yet. Yeah. So that's where you have to let that do. Let there was no that guy. Mm-hmm. And that's where I first started. The biggest revelation I had was, okay, here, of course, she's my wife. I have to give the bank account information. And it wasn't, it was no longer about me. It started to be about us. Mm-hmm. And that was through the strength of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've had my ways, no doubt, no if answer bust about that. Uh, the best, but the best way I've grown is through spiritually with her as us growing together. My wife, I have no problem saying that she was the spiritual leader in our household. Absolutely. She was having me come to Bible study and these things because me, I want to watch sports and see the Warriors game and see the Niners. And I was not feeling the word as much. But now I have, the roles are starting to change. I'm getting much more spiritual now, much more into our word. And the last, especially the last uh, several months, I've been saying, come on, baby, we've got to do Bible study before I go to work. Because we do our Bible study, study typically at about uh, uh, 530 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then we work out and then I, I hit the We want to start, start each day out with the word. And so um, that's the that's the best thing I can say. And the way she's grown, she, my wife is just, she's always been fantastic. She's always been fantastic. The biggest thing she's done is found her voice more. Mm-hmm. Me as a man, I you know I thought I still was. I had some dominating personality things with her. Mm-hmm. I'd overtalk her. I'd outthink her when we'd argue. I'd kill her on an argument. But she she learned and she evolved. She like the range, adapted, overcome. She started taking notes in our arguments and started using my words against me. But because she goes, "No, I got the note. This is what you said." And, I, yeah. and then I said, "I started losing the arguments." But here's the thing: <laughs> I started, when I started losing the arguments, but it wasn't about losing. No, I'm getting ready to it say was that, about man. us working together yeah. towards the solution of a problem, not me beating her. I came from a family where you're supposed to win. But we're supposed to work together. Yeah. She's not my adversary. Yeah, she is my partner. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing I've learned throughout our marriage. She is not that my, my foe. I said, when we argue, you are not my friend. You're, you're the person I'm arguing with. She goes, no, I'm always your partner, whether we agree or something or not. But we have to work towards that solution. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I don't like that she was taking notes. Oh. Oh, she, oh, hey, hey, but if we I have issues, it. she takes notes. She wanted, because I would Flip things. So I didn't say that. What I said was, she going, "Oh no, mm-hmm. this is what you say." Because here's the uh, note right here, and, I, mm-hmm. and that, you know, that's the And I was just like, "Oh man, <laughs> well, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. it is. Yeah. It was yeah. absolutely needed." And now we rarely argue. And when we talk, what we'll, we'll sit down like here. I don't like this. I, I disagree with this. And we'll sit down and we'll discuss it. And sometimes we come up with great solutions. Sometimes we don't. And sometimes we say we're going to agree to disagree on this. But it's nothing that's been. Life altered or changed where I'm not speaking to her anymore or anything like that. I don't that. take it too personal. No, I don't, it's never too personal because in the end, I don't like to argue with her. She doesn't like to argue with me. We yeah. want to get and 90, probably 95% of the time we get along. Uh, but the 5%, uh, we, we do bump heads, but we have a solution to try to work it out as a, as a team. So that's how you both have grown. It's not absolutely. Like, both of us. Uh, absolutely. You guys are mature. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, well, that answers my question. I'm taking mental notes too because okay. I'm not married and, uh, you know, maybe one day I will be. And I just I want to I'm trying to absorb this stuff from you guys and you know with with, with more experience. And yes. Just, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm super scared right now. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we got I'm, you. We got you. Uh, 
All right, sorry, Nate, bro. We no, 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 no. We'll watch the next section. No, not that we started off because it is in Proverbs in chapter 18, verse 22. When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, going back to the Laval's deal with I'll sign the paperwork, that's another topic because right. I believe in Genesis it does say we have to obey the laws of the land. Mm -hmm. In Romans, yes. it does say you have to obey your government as long right. as it isn't. Uh, they seizure what is due to Caesar. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. But and the government is corrupt because politics are politics and God is God. So um, going back to finding a good, when a man finds a good wife, he finds a good, she finds a good thing. A what? When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Um, right here. Yeah. When a man finds, the Bible says that a man finds a wife, he's found a good thing, obtained fear from God. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Now, what is a good wife? That's one. What is a good wife? Because some of these women are going to be like, yeah, you heard that? With my ring? Yeah, put a ring on a Beyonce style. But what is a good wife? Uh, I'll let you guys answer that because it does answer in the Bible. I want to hear what you guys mm, say. Yeah. It's simple. Proverbs yeah. 31. That's it. Proverbs 31, chapter 10, so verse 31. Say it. Oh, it's a, it's a good chapter. You should read right. it. No, I can't quote the whole thing. Trust me, it's a good chapter. Okay. <laughs> 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 Proverbs 31, chapter 10, verse 31. Yeah. No, I mean, there's aspects of, of explaining because uh, I remember with Cheryl, uh, that woman, she digs, she digs, that's what we call getting in the word, she digs, and she digs hard, um, and she, <laughs> for a good period, she she literally tore her Bible apart reading it, and so I went back, found a place to have it uh, rebound, and um, I had it rebound, and on the side of it, I had a Proverbs 31, and it etched inside, or on the, on the uh, side of the page, thank you, on the side of the Bible, right. Um, and the interesting thing about that is, I can't, I can't give you verses, or I can't give you the exact addresses, but, yeah, right. the, but the, the main part of it was like, a woman, um, she will tend to her own field, she will make sure that her family is clothed, she will nurture them and love them, she will pour into her husband, she will acknowledge that her husband is respected in the city and at the gate, and that when she stands in, before others, that she will be honored. And it's like, we, by our, who we are in our name, I really believe in the power of our name. God has called, I mean, Samuel said, when he announced his names like two to three times to make sure you know he's talking to you kind of thing. But in that aspect, in our names, they supersede us. It's not just Romolo, it's the Minas. Like, the Minas, mm -hmm. she steps in as a Mina. So when, oh, she, oh, that's her. You know, Romulo's wife, that's Cheryl Minna. The name supersedes us. She's guarded by everything that we have already set forth. And it's very interesting in that because in Proverbs 31, it asks, there's aspects of what they do is what builds us up. That's what motivates us. That's what's allowed me to be so ambitious now because she's poured into so much. And, and it, she literally, to me, she does exuberate Proverbs 31 in so many ways. And I think that's the best way. I mean, granted, not everyone's spiritual, not everyone mm -hmm. follows Christ. Very true. But it is a true breadcrumb guideline to what a true woman wife should be. I have it right here if you want me to read it. Oh, yeah. Go no, break it. Break it. All right. This beautiful realm. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out of sight. In her hand, she holds a distaff and grasps a spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to pour and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household. For all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate. Yeah, you don't want to come to that city. You're like, mm, she has wife at home. Damn. Yeah. Where he takes seats among the elders of the land, she makes him linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. 
She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of the idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but she can surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. Mm -hmm. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can see women listening listen to this and, okay, you want me to work. <laughs> you want me to make this. You want me to clean the vineyards. You want me to take care of the kids. You want me to take care of my husband. You want me to honor him, do all of these things. And so that I can see that biblical stuff. But I don't see that as, as realistic in today's times. But it's a bigger risk to go into a marriage without God in it than it is 100%. to go into it with God in it. 100%. And granted, I mean, no one says it's going to be easy. This was written thousands of years ago. And you want a hot plate. Don't bring that shit cold. <laughs> but I mean, it's all relevant, especially because it can be applied to me. I can't stand Nate. I, I want the world to know. I didn't say, bro, I'm Nate. <laughs> the one in the middle. The one in the middle. The one in the middle. Yeah, this one, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like them. All right. The <laughs> one in the middle. You're about to train me in a couple weeks, bro. Mm, bro. Yeah, We're going to work on you, Nate. Yeah, we are. I'm on the prayer list. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm on Sam and you on mine. That's it. <laughs> hey, you on mine? Hey, you on mine too? That is bad. You on mine too? Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> now, where are we going with it, bro? Yeah, um, sorry. No, I mean, just granted, they, you know, these words, they're living words. They, they, yes. they can and do apply today. You just have to search your heart and see how it applies. Granted, we're not asking you to go become the CEO of some Fortune 500 company. But if you are in a place, and we're talking about for all of us, I mean, we, we all live in the West Coast. We all live in California. This, our state primarily is a two-income state. You need One, two incomes to survive this culture and walk in this culture. But here's the thing. That doesn't mean you have to go make, you know, high six figures. It's like, even your willingness to pro help provide or contribute. He's not provide because that's our role, but right. to contribute. Or, hey, if it's like, you know what? You're up just as early as I am, and you're getting the kids ready to school while I'm getting ready for work. And thank you for making me breakfast. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't have to go out on an empty stomach. Go, and I loved your phrase last week or last time. Go, you know, bring home a buffalo. Yeah, you know, it's like there, there's aspects of the contribution. And it's like your husband is building a name. For not just himself, but for the family. And you get to receive those blessings in that. When you go and step into the, the, the store, if you're in the mall or something like that, and it's like, oh, hey, that's Cheryl. Oh, hey, how you doing? You, your, your name is extended beyond who you are. And it's like these attributes that we, that God has laid out, they're not just so, you know, the man can feel good about it. It benefits you. And it's like these blessings are blessings for a reason. And it's like they can still be applied. We, you know, it's like, oh, you know, she goes out and gets, you know, purple um, uh, sashes. It's like, you know what, baby, thank you for going picking me out a new blazer. I appreciate that. It feels good. Man, I, I love a good suit. I don't get to wear them often, but put me in a good suit and I'll just feel like a million dollars. I don't care if you got it from Walmart. Tarche. <laughs> all right that's it this table going down but, my point is like but she would have had a willingness and what she was able to get that from what she contributed i'm not asking you it's like these attributes and, and, and qualities still apply today and it's like don't discard them because there's there's so much gold and weight in them because the better you stand, the better the husband stands. The better the husband stands, the better the family stands. The better the family stands, the name, the name will supersede all. Because we all do it for Christ. Everyone at this table does it for Christ. Yeah, that's interesting. So uh, one thing I love about the answers is everything goes back to God. No matter what for questions us. that I've <laughs> asked or that Nate has asked, Everything goes back to God. And I think that's a, a, a wonderful thing. Um, so let's keep that going. However, I I think sometimes we don't answer the question directly. Okay. So if we say what makes a good wife, out well, we kind of, we're a little bit specific with the with Proverbs, but if we had to list, I don't know, three or four or five things, like, because I'm just concerned with people listening that not everybody's listening 
and is, right. is of Christ, right? right. So, Absolutely. So to cater to them a little bit, to give them something, we can still keep it biblical or keep it spiritual, but what are some things that, you know, they can walk respect. with tangibly? Respect. respect. So respect. a wife is respectful? Like, she's respectful. Okay. She, don't get me wrong. We're, I'm not saying that you don't get mad. I'm not saying you ain't going to get pissed off. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's not a reason to call me an asshole, a motherfucker, seven times in the city. So we got oh, our YouTube oh, channel. Oh, so no, he, can, he can do that. How many can we talk anyway? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm being real. Yeah, I'm being yeah, real yeah, because yeah. And I chose these words. I'm not one to use these words yeah, lightly. And here's the thing, right. for those that know me, I don't cuss. So for me to use those words, yeah. there are too many men in this world that get that language spoken to them. And then the sad thing is they turn around and deliver it right back. And that's what corrupts and corrodes our unity. It's like, I need to feel good just as much as you do. So you calling me that? I'm not going to reciprocate. Oh, I should love you. I'm going to rub you. Just, you just got on me because I was playing Madden too long? Dog me for that. Like, you could have used better vocabulary. We all got educations. Use, use it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you have to subject yourself to four-letter words. They sound good. <laughs> feel, feel good. Just be, okay. My favorite cuss word is F word. <laughs> See, oh, the B word. Wait, okay, so. I'm gonna say it for what it is. Rest his soul, Bernie Max. Now, back in back yes, in yes. King's no, Comedy, he had I'm this not, stand up yeah. where he was able to have a conversation and he used that phrase yes, yes. Yeah. MF. Yeah. You know, and, and everybody in that audience knew exactly what he was talking about. Don't be afraid to use the word motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker is enough. <laughs> It describes the person, place, like, of okay. thing. <laughs> I mean, we say it, but there's... You're seeing that motherfucker, Johnny. I mean, I mean, he owe me 35 motherfucking dollars. I started because he's all the way out. But I ain't going to start no motherfucker. <laughs> Lord, I used to have a good party back in the impression of the trash I, now. Still to this day, I swear he is one of the kings of comedy. Yeah, yeah, but no, all that to say, no, no. I mean, yeah, we all laugh about it. And in his context, it was all jokes. But in the house, in the framework of the what we supposed to have a sanctified area, a place of comfort, those words should not need. I'm not saying don't get mad. I'm not saying you might not say it once in a blue moon. But there's no reason to use it in every sentence just because you got heated, mm -hmm. just because you got pissed. And let alone, I'm going to say it. There's no reason. I'll take that back. No man should feel comfortable dropping the B word to his lovely wife. Mm. Or Granted. Or girlfriend. Or girlfriend. Or girlfriend. I, well, right, right. Yeah. You know, I, but I'm just, I mean, you know, sorry, the context was, but I'm saying, I'm calling it out. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you say. I'm a big enough grown man. I don't care. I'm telling you, from me and the gents I roll with, there's no reason for it. I think, I think you're all saying in any relationship, um, that we consider a good woman is fighting fair. That she doesn't hit below the belt. She do. Um, or you. Well, yeah. You, you don't want anyone. Someone. This is true for both anyone. parties. Anyone, yeah. yeah. Anyone. yeah. Right? anyone. It's, you know, I think it's different for every household. I think that's, this is a tough question because what you like, I may not like. And yeah. what, what, what floats your boat may not, it might sink my ship. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's It's different. We put each other in a box when we say what makes someone a good this or good that. I understand the context of the question and we want to give some real examples, but what's good to you, you need to identify that and, 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 and really pour into it, really nurture it if you want to flourish. And okay. so there's good people everywhere. I met a lot of good people on this journey in life. It doesn't mean they were yoked for me for marriage. Right. Well, it yeah. doesn't mean that's someone I can roll with and rock with every day. We might vibe because we like Wu-Tang. And I might mm -hmm. hang out with my homegirl that likes baseball. Doesn't mean that she's a good woman for Sam Thompson. Right. So it's different. So you got to identify that yourself and then pour into that. No, I, I agree with you, but there are some basic principles that I think are universal. So yes. for me, I think it's respect. Uh, I think it's nurture. True. And I think it's, uh, in, in terms of spirituality, it's you're equally yoked spiritually. I struggle with that, but I like that you brought that up. Yeah, because if you have those three things, and this goes for men too, not, you know, what makes a good husband, it's the, kind of the same thing, but we're asking what makes a good wife. So if women are listening out there, if you take anything away from this conversation about, okay, I want to be a good wife, what is it? 
uh, to men, it's okay, be respectful. Or to Larry. What, so to okay. men or to Larry? Uh, let's, let's make sure. That's why I'm saying this. Yes, yeah, but it's, I'm, saying. It's, it's, I'm saying to men. Or is Larry the reason speaking why on behalf of the council? I'm speaking on behalf of the council. So, how right. many of you guys disagree, disagree with me when I say respect? None of us. Okay. Disagree. How many do you dis- How many disagree when I say nurturing? Um, I I, I disagree. You but, disagree with nurturing in general, and I'll get. I'll tell you why. Okay. Because we're supposed to love our wives. But no, love and nurture. <laughs> it, they, so they, that comes from us. They go. They go hand in hand. But okay. It's 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 different. You can love someone, but if you love them, you will nurture them. But some people mm-hmm. are very nurturing, and that's okay. That's the thing. So. And okay. nurturing is one, and ha- equally yoked yoke spiritually. I, I don't. I, I disagree. Don't, okay, cool. Let agree. me tell you why I agree with you. I mean, let me tell you why I think that way. You might, when I say equally yoked, I what I really mean. Maybe I should rephrase it. Is you it's guys believe yoke. you believe in the same thing? Because you might, you might. I think you interpret equally yoked as you're on the same exact level with your walk. With Christ. Equal. No. That's no. That's equal. Okay. That's why I don't agree. Okay. 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 Two can't walk together okay. without them being in alignment. That's okay. why I struggle with that in my walk because my wife didn't grow up in church. Right. So if I yeah. just went off of that, that's my top three. If I'm Larry Nelson, that's mm-hmm. my top three. She's gone right out the gate. Right. And if we're, well, if we're to go to make disciples of others, I can't always be equally yoked with other believers because the point of meeting and on this walk is to but meet the non-believers. Talks about that. I know he, I know it does, and but but that's why I struggle men. with for that's men why relationship. That's men why versus I struggle Larry. with it. Yeah, that's why. Men I, that's versus not, Larry. That's not. So you, that's not so nobody at this table wants to be with someone who believes the same thing that you. Of believe. course I do, but when I met my wife, she wasn't in the church. Is what I'm saying. And he's still no, it's a different. And, and so, so, so equally yoke yeah. is part of that spiritual walk that you both believe in God and, and, and Jesus Christ and all that, right? Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is she or didn't not grow, in some cases, but she right. didn't grow up in that. So if I'm going to go make disciples and be a witness. She's not equally yoked. So I'm meeting someone that doesn't know God's word and I'm bringing that to her. And because of that, now my wife is baptized in the name of right. the Father's Holy Spirit. Right. If church. it was been so equally yoked, we would have never walked on this right. journey period exactly. at all. Okay. That's, why, wrong, I, she's that's why I draw a hard line with yeah. that because we cut people off. And I know why we say that. It's because you don't compromise your walk, walking with those that are not equally yoked. Right. I know why it's brought to that context, but we miss the whole mission that you're not to, you're supposed to set apart from the world, but equally yoke means you don't hang up with non-believers, but that's what we're trying to say. But we're saying that from a believer standpoint, which yeah. we all are, but even for those who don't, what makes a good wife? So when I say equally yoke, I'm talking from a spiritual standpoint, but it could also mean, because what if they're Buddhists? What if they're uh, Muslim or, or, well, you know, Christians and Catholics? They could be Jewish. They could be Jewish. Like, whatever it is, yeah. like, or even if you don't believe at all, you're atheist, right. you're atheist. atheist. In, that, in that way, because it's going to be yeah, a conflict there. It's and a conflict. Actually, what I'm trying to do is eliminate. Yeah. I'm eliminate. What, what is what is eliminate? Eliminate. eliminate thank you. We're trying to eliminate as uh, as many roadblocks as possible. And so, if you're not respectful and you're not very nurturing, and oh, kindness is another thing. If you're not very kind, then we. I don't think any relationship could work. And that's why I want to that, do this. Are you talking for the men or are you talking for you. Larry? This sounds that's like you're talking you. for Larry. My top five is. Totally different. Because yeah, my top five aren't, That's aren't, aren't even in yours. Which well, wait, you what's yours? Oh, 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 so we talk about love languages again. No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about you. You, you standing you up for all men, bro. bro. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm just saying, what, what man out there? This <laughs> sounds like me. You're talking for Larry. But that's you, Larry. Okay, maybe if it is, I just don't feel like there's a majority of men who would disagree with what I'm saying. We all want to be with all prioritize. I think we value those things, but we we prioritize them differently. I'll give him that. Because okay. they're all, they're not to yeah. say they, they're on our radar. You want to be with somebody who's disrespectful to you? No, it's not. Oh, okay. No, it's not. But, you it's not, but, it's, but you label those as your top three. And those are. Of things that make a good wife. For Larry. Larry. But that doesn't Larry. mean I'm Larry. Larry. They my, might my be on our radar. Yeah. But they aren't our That's top, top three. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen, my, my, I guess. My number one is understanding. And you didn't even get there yet. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Like, my list is different than your list. My number one is being selfless. Yeah. yeah see, that's... It's, yeah. It's, they're all different. Right? I didn't even say anything about top three. I was just... I was going down the list and I didn't put <laughs> it in the order. suck. To be... <laughs> suck. Cut the tape. Cut the tape. Tony, cut the tape. Yeah. 
Joe, yeah. get, fade us out the black. Yeah, Rob. <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob. 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 Yeah, cut, cut it off, man. Cut his mic off. <laughs> I don't want to hear him no more. No, y'all, I get what you guys are saying. That you're trying, you're saying that I'm making it about me, and I'm a part of that. But the reason why I say most men, because of course all of us are different, right? But I don't. Like I keep saying, I don't find anybody that could dis- 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 disagree with. I mean, I'm not I, saying that I'm we saying. do. I just think we all go back to what things. the Randall was saying. The level of or the hierarchy of what is important. Right. I, didn't, I, didn't hier- I didn't put anything in the hierarchy. I just listed them. I didn't say my number one thing is this or my number two is that. I'm just, what the question they asked was: What makes a good wife? Right. And I said, someone who's nurturing, someone who's respectful, and someone who kind. is on is kind, kind kindness. That goes with understanding as well. That's some no, of those are. Doesn't. You can't, can't, you can't. No, I just understand they are different. Very different. They're very different. They have their, very different definitions, but it's like left hand, right hand. No. How can you be kind to someone you don't? I mean, no, I guess you're right. Nah, you nah, nah, nah. So your good list I'll work suck. I'll work Back on the brush will break your list. Still suck. Hey, you, Larry, you. Shout out to Walmart for our good sponsor. Larry, you kind of me. You can't yeah. stand me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm kind of you, Nate, because I believe in God. That's why. Yeah. But All he right. wasn't looking. Nah. Was, <laughs> so, so, at least my point of view with, with that question. And I'm talking for Orlando. I'm talking for Orlando. First one with me is selfless. I need someone who's selfless. Respect mm-hmm. is going to be um, really important. Next one, I need somebody I'm compatible with sexually. Mm-hmm. I got no problem saying it. And then I need somebody who's a good communicator. And lastly, this is my top five. I need somebody who can treat me as an equal and treat me fairly. Those are my top five. My top five. I'm not speaking for everybody else. This is for Orlando. Now, sex may not even be an issue with y'all or anything like that, but that's, you know, my history and everything like that. That's, that's important to me for it to connect that way Mm -hmm. intimately Mm -hmm. and it could be intimately and spiritually. Mm-hmm. See, Larry? I, I, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. I understand, but I, I don't think we're answering the question. But we that's are, okay. we are, that we, we are. I know you want to give some general principles out there because everybody. To it's obvious that everybody is different in terms of the particulars. I don't think anybody wants to be with someone who's not understanding or not kind and stuff like that. But what are like the basic principles that are universal? I think. I respect. struggle with that because respect for sure. we're, we're all so wired differently. We're different. We're all different. And, and, and that's we're why I, I have a, I'm being honest, I have a hard time answering what all men would want because I've seen you can't men answer in what all men would want. where the women they pick, it's not good. Right. It's not healthy for them, the type of relationship they're in. And that's what they chose. But so, that's what they chose, but because, it's not good. Because the things they like in that relationship that might be toxic, they vibe in that environment. I couldn't vibe in that. I couldn't vibe in a negative environment. Well, a spouse is always negative, but they like that. Or emotional roller coaster. Or emotional roller coaster. They like that ups and down and that. They like the lifetime movie. Yeah. There's cats out there who just love ghetto love. What they call it ghetto love. I know cats who like to argue, like to fight. They curse each other out. Right. Well, that's what they are attracted to. I know. Me, I'm not feeling that. You know what's funny about that? Okay, when I was at Cal State Florida, Yeah. I went to a dance show with my niece Mm -hmm. and my sister and her husband from Compton. Mm -hmm. They just got turned on over ghetto love because afterwards he's like, hey, Moochie, after this, let's go to a poor local chicken. You know, she's like, nah, I want, some, chicken. Nah, I want some water cone limon. I want to be watering down. He's like, nah, Moochie, they got that $10 chicken bucket for your poor local. And they argued on campus in front of my nieces. <laughs> over chicken. Over poor local. Over, over poor local chicken. Your poor local. Holla at us. But yeah, they got a, a ghetto mm-hmm. argument over that. Mm-hmm. And even though they got they one voice raised the other, right, one voice raised right, the right. other, I'm over here like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, there's some there's some bull jive. My niece is like, Uncle, I can't I can't stand them. But while they were arguing, you can tell they were getting turned on mm-hmm. erotically. Mm-hmm. I want to pull up a nah, man. I want water cone limon. Like just arguing. I'm like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Some people vibe them. So we're, like, we're all different when it comes yeah. to that. Yeah. we are all different when it comes to that. They would have said on so that's why I just spoke me. Saying, you know, <laughs> All right, this is my last attempt. I'm just trying to say there are basic strike, strike principles. Strike three coming. Because what you got all for, 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 for who? For all people. Okay. For no. all people. That, 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 that That's, moral, it's that not moral. about what you like. I'm talking about basic, pre- like, okay, so we all want to be respected. Yes yeah. or no? 
Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's a basic principle. That's one. one. That's one. So what are the other ones? <laughs> what are the other ones that we all no, can I agree guess, with? Yes, sex. Not, I'm not, yeah, sex. He says sex. That's that's what, wait, is that a basic principle for all of us? Good, good sex? sex? No, no. See, you can't be you getting now you're getting picky. Cause if, How is that picky? <laughs> because here's the thing. For her, it might be good. For you, you, you not. As, as far as you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> wow. Let's move on to the next topic. Yeah, we'll yeah. this, yeah. Right yeah. Three, this, this one, yeah. That's why I say, I don't think you can say it universally. Right. That's why I said, again, this is for Orlando. I think we're all going to have our uh, proclivities and our, 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 our peculiarities, but that is who, who we are not, th- that defines us. Not all cats, not all ladies, not all dudes are going to get down with our, with our, our specific Okay, what makes, what makes a good husband? Belly full of balls empty. <laughs> What makes a good husband? He knew that question was coming. Yeah. <laughs> he answered that question out. What, 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 this is a setup. How did he answer that so fast? I couldn't, I couldn't even Wait, complete. What did he do? 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 What well, let's, um, okay, let's, let's, let's ask the question and we can close out. No, you gotta have a lady here. You gotta have a lady here. You gotta have one. One sweet need to bring up female's perspective into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? But then, you know, let me bring up one more thing when it comes to that. We're talking about good husband, good men, good women, good, good wives, and things along, along that. Um, I thought, I never thought I'd be this guy. And, you know, I'm older now. Y'all know that. You know, I'm in my, I'm in my early 50s now. And I never thought about, think about these, these young kids got no respect nowadays. They got no respect. Um, I'm sorry, but you know, the youngsters, the younger, younger cats, the, the way I see some of these younger cats, uh, the way they've grown, the way they've evolved and the, and the way they treat women. Um, you know, we, you know, I'm going to keep it real. Um, from my understanding, especially with the music nowadays, we're one of the few races out there who refer to our women on a regular basis as bitches and hoes and the music and the lyrics and things that go, that go along with that. And it's just amazing to me, especially with young black men, that some of the negative and horrible things I hear about young black men and the things I see compared to, I know when I was young, I did things, but I didn't do certain things. I just said, there's no way. For example, I went, uh, and this was years ago, we went to a, a Greek show, went to a Greek show. And with all the fraternities and everything, and a bunch of cats from Oakland showed up at the Greek show. You know, it's nothing but girls there and everything like that. And these guys were just like straight gangster women with these sisters. I kid you not. Um, and I just wonder where this mentality comes from. They were going up to sisters at the Greek show outside, and they was like, give me a kiss. And the girl said, no, they didn't kiss them. Socked them in their face and knocked mm. them down. Knock them out. That's too much for me. Knock them out. And it was a bunch of just thuggish young dudes, and that's what they thought of our women as is that they were no better than if I you don't kiss me, I'm just gonna knock you out. And that was the mentality. I am seeing more and more and more of this nowadays. And unfortunately, that I absolutely believe that no problem saying that is the minority, but that's what always stands out because especially with our young men and our youth, all you see on the news nowadays is our people. Our young men robbing Norsons, robbing Apple, all these gangs doing these things. And we have, we are so, so stereotyped as young black men as, as being dangerous, as being ostracized, as being just violent. And unfortunately, we all get brushed with that stroke. And so it's really interesting as, especially one who grew up without a father in a household that who was being the role model for these young men. And it's just amazing some of the, the horrible mentalities young black men have nowadays. I think we are the role models for the next generation. I, and I'm not self-proclaiming that. I'm Fair saying enough. factually that that's a narrative that's always painted, but there's plenty of men in our communities doing good things with our youth. And that's not always headline news. Exactly. I've been married right. from serving nonprofit and at-risk youth. Right. I've met Nate um, through his family. Now we break bread together. And we're, I, I, and I'll watch his kids when he has to work. Mm-hmm. Orlando, you've worked in community yeah. and you've paid it forward and Absolutely. you're still doing those things. And this is the building blocks to that. So I think we got to be careful that that's all that's painted because it's our obligation to highlight the other side of that. There's Jarvis Williams working in Absolutely. the community. There's Absolutely. Jarvis Crawford Jarvis, Jarvis doing Crawford, yeah. great things. Yeah. So Williams and Crawford. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we, we got to be forthcoming with our own story and our own narratives to kind of react what we see and have experienced. Um, Cause we're not all just that. 
And I would challenge the narrative that that's all we are and that's all that is being seen. I've worked in communities where we are on the news and we're talking about these festivals and things we're doing and and showing the kids at work and volunteering, pouring back into the community and giving scholarships. There's plenty of us doing good. We just like to only focus on the negative. Right. Well, because the, the, yeah, because the, the, the negative sells, you know, used to sell new, sell newspapers before that. If it bleeds, it bleeds. Yeah, yeah but that's, that's sells, the, now yeah. I've worked in news for years. That yeah, is exactly. like, it's exactly. painted on the wall. But yeah. also to Orlando's point about music specifically, like, we, mm. you know, 90s RB, I'm biased, but 90s and late 80s and 90s RB, that's my stuff right there, right? The love songs are different. I'll make love to you, right? Mm-hmm. Now, that's music amazing. is like, I will beat them cheeks <laughs> <laughs> and spread the ass. You no, know, like, oh my right. God. I mean, let's, oh, let's, Lord. You, know, you were talking about role models. We got role models like Little Nas X. We have, don't get me wrong, I love, I love, ba- you know, I love basketball. But when you have like Jean Morin like running around social media, you know, waving guns. Right. And stuff. It's like, these are the, oh, okay, and let's be no, real. It is, it is one guy, but the But no, is, but they're the ones that get plastered like on these mainstream TV. So not, I'm not blaming Damn. us necessarily. I'm, I, a lot has the, the news and, and what gets reported has a lot to blame. Sure. But at the same time, we're the ones who are doing it. So Jean Morant doing that, he's just one guy. Yes. Right. But, but. It's the it's the it's the the uh the, the highlights right. Of it's, that, it's the magnifying glass. It's, the, on that. The it's like the okay, it's not just glass. on Sports Center. No, they're gonna it's run it on the eleven o'clock news. However, they're gonna run it on the six o'clock news. Yes, and then, the TV and then you and wonder that. why they're scared of us. Well, but, but that's also why they kept showing Ray Rice. Yeah, they kept showing yeah, Ray Rice. But also, that. also though, Ray Rice did knock her out in the elevator several times. Just John Morant did wave his gun. So it's not you can't. You know, these dudes did do the crime. Yep. So you can't say that they didn't. But, and, but I think but that's see, the thing. This is my point, and I, and I don't want to cut y'all off, but we're talking about these two or three incidents that no one brought up LeBron James opening up a school. No, I know. So but that's not the point. point. But that's my point, is that we're looking at the negative and we haven't highlighted the positive. positive. So we're recycling the same narrative. We're we're, we're part of the problem. Yeah. Not, no one on this this. This segment yeah. has that's said anything it. that's positive that our people have done. Not yet, because we, we were highlighting. Because we highlight the negative first. And yes, that's, part of, what, that's part of the problem is my what's point. It's juicy. I, I totally 100% agree with you. And that we're making the same point, just from a different, from yeah, different yeah, side. Yeah, because um, my point is, on one hand, you have the news that only focuses on the negative. Yeah. But on the other hand, you have the dudes that are doing the negative. And so we we should, to your point, focus on the positive Agreed. and Agreed. get that out there. And mm-hmm. that's what that's what the point I was trying to get to. But we can't say that the guys that did it, even though it's a few, I think there are more of us that are doing positive things than there are uh, others that are doing negative things. But what's that say? The squeaky wheel gets it's the oil or whatever. Right. Like that's right. the problem, and and that's more exciting to the general public, and it, and it serves their na- their narratives. Uh, that you know, black people are this or black people are that. It, mm-hmm. it kind of served that ner- that that uh, negative stereotype. I hate it personally. That, that's my point. That's why I don't talk about it. I mean, that's that's my know. point. That's why I'm. Yeah. Let's talk about LeBron. Let's give him five more minutes. Let's give him his right. flowers. Fair enough. Let's talk about Jarvis and Crawford and Williams. Yeah. Let's talk about what they're doing here in Coachella Valley. We give too much energy to those one clowns, and they become the headline news. And that's what I'm saying. We don't need to put energy towards that, despite it's a reality. It will be talked about it, but let them talk about it. Let's focus on the ones that are actually counteracting that. Stuff. But we were talking, yeah. yes, I agree with you. And we were talking about mentorship. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. it's up to us, to your point, because, you know, we were we, we met in that yeah. in that scenario, right? So we were talking to young kids, trying to get them in the, uh, steer them in the right direction. We need to do more of that. Mm-hmm. Right. And we need to, we, and if we're going to be a mentor to, to young, to the younger generation, we need to lead by example. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think we all are at this table mm-hmm. trying to lead by example. Not perfect, but we're, we're really mm-hmm. trying to do it. Yeah. But we're oftentimes not on that stage, that that, that, that highlighted stage that, that the others are on. Yeah. Now, granted, there are plenty of us. I absolutely agree with what you're saying, Sam. Brother LeBron James is doing his thing. Plenty of brothers are doing all kinds of things out there. Mm-hmm. But um, I think I heard one person say, but the other stuff is so much juicier. And it gets so much more attention than those positive that's things. Right. Yeah, and that's our fault. It is. We, yeah. we subscribe to it. We focus on it. We watch it when they're 
talking about it on the 10 o'clock news, 11 o'clock news. Yeah. We, we, we see it on, you know, Twitter and TikTok and we gravitate towards it and that's our fault. And I think that's human nature, dude. Like, that's why we watch MMA. That's why we watch boxing. We want to see Good point. We want to see you know Joe Smith or whoever get smashed in the yeah. face. I didn't want to watch That's more exciting than watching Joe Smith do ballet. You know, y'all that's the point. That's a good point. That's y'all a good point. It's, it's, it's human Ballot nature point. to yeah. get the juice. Y'all brought a Robert remembrance. <laughs> y'all brought a remembrance to me um, before we have to wrap up. So after I was going through my divorce with my ex, it got petty. I mean, petty. But through that trial. And my kids were three and two at the time. I knew it would come a point in time where one of them would ask, how come you and mom aren't married no more? Mm. I wonder if my ex thought about that. Just like we talked about, the negative gets the facts, the negative gets the juice, the negative gets the attention. So I try to spin it in a positive way, but be truthful, but I didn't know how to answer that for when that day would come. So I came up with the answer, the honest answer, and my daughter, when she was five, after picking her up from kindergarten one day, asked me, how come you and mom are not together no more? I see all these other kids with parents picking them up. Mm-hmm. How come you and mom don't live together? So I'm like, at least I was prepared for this. So I answered to my daughter, at one point I did love your mom. Your mom and I did love each other, but we fell out of love. But it does not mean that we don't love you and your brother. That's beautiful. She accepted it. I know. So she was cool with it. She was at peace with it. That question I knew, depending on how that answer would be, would be pivotal. 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 You know, where, all right, dad, too, I can't stand that. To now it's, you raised my kids. You've been with my kids. Mm-hmm. I'm not a perfect dad. <laughs> I, I try, though. And, but they're happy kids. You know, I think that's, uh, I think that's beautiful. That's, that's more prevalent nowadays. Yeah. What is it? More than half of marriages in now? Mm-hmm. It was fifty percent. I think it's over sixty-four percent. Is it seventy-four? Like I looked oh, it up the other day. Dude, I thought like last time I looked it up, it was twenty-five. Wait, again. we're increasing ten percent oh a year. That's horrifically sad. Yeah. And the, the real quick story: um, when my daughter was still living in the house when she was going to school, one time I took my daughter, and I, you know, I guess the kids never noticed, but I, I took her, dropped her off. And my daughter had come home the next day. And she was like, well, Daddy, all my girlfriends are out there. And they're like, who's that man you're with? Who's that man dropping you off? Who is he? And she goes, that's my dad. They said, okay, yeah, but who who actually is he? She said, that's my dad. Mm-hmm. And all her friends said, your biological dad? Mm-hmm. And she was like, Wait, yeah. Like that was the question? Yes. She said, all her friends, everybody in their lives were the mother's bo- bo- the mother's boyfriend, the mother's boyfriend. Mm. They thought I was <laughs> my oh. daughter's mother's boyfriend because none of them had their fathers in their oh. lives, and they were That's all so mother's boyfriend. Sad. Well, they had to question my child, and none of them had that, so they were shocked that the biological dad was in her life, dropped her off. That this, was amazing to me. I encountered this this where. Yeah, last year we we met last year at the school uh, council event. Remember, was, was that last year? That? Yeah, yeah, it okay. was. It was last year. Dang. Okay, yeah. <laughs> last year I encountered the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, I never thought I would be Mr. Mom taking the kids right. to school. Like I, that was definitely not my 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 projection of life. Um, and so I started taking my boys to school. That's what I do. Mm-hmm. And they questioned. They're like, "Oh." Your dad? Who? Who? Who is that? Who is that? Your dad that takes you to school? He's like, well, yeah. My son's like, yeah. I was like, oh, you, your mom? He's like, no, my mom's at home. He's like, your dad takes you to school? Mm-hmm. And it was like, yeah. He's like, well, where's your mom? She's still like, she's like, she's at home. And he's like, oh wait, they're still together. And I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. He's like, well, yeah, aren't yours? Like he had to like request right. like, like your parents aren't together. Yep. And it's unfortunately it's sad. Yeah. My boys are the minority of the marital Absolute group. Absolutely the minority. And you I'm like, what? no, I don't. Well, it's according to Amer- to the American Psychological Association, 40 to 50 percent of first marriages in a divorce. While this is the number I recall, 60 to 67 of percent of second marriages end in divorce. Wow. While third marriages have the highest divorce rate with 73 percent 
and then you're divorced. So, I mean, this is what baffled me. I'm seriously, like, I it really took me a good two days to process this. Because I was like, wait a minute. The, the atmosphere we're providing our family, I and mean, this is just me, I mean, but I mean, say I'm in Orlando, like, the world that we are creating for our boys is becoming non-existent. Yes. And that troubles me because, like, when, it's like, I tell my boys, it's like, don't play my mom, don't play your mom and I against each other. Like, I know you and I've known the game too long. Mm-hmm. Like, you go to mom, she says no, and then you run to me. We're one unit. She says no, I mean no. no. If I right. say yes, the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. And it's like, but don't try to play us against each other. But here's the thing. That's not the aspect in every, you know, it's like, yeah. it's just mom or it's just dad. Mm-hmm. And it's like that sense of unity is like, we, I don't know how to put it into words, but it really is disturbing to know that, well, let's just go back into the 50s. It was so passe to be like, oh, you know, she's a single mom or, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, you know. It was yeah. shameful back then. Right. But, no, it was shameful. Today, there's but, no shame. But in, and I say, and I put back that, that far back, it was like, it was almost implied, it was like, oh, you lost your husband to a war or a fight. Like, yeah. it was, oh, okay, it's acceptable because it was a situational. So that part. Right. Yeah. But yeah. now it's just like, it's, who, who, who is that? That's your biological dad That's dropping you friend. off? And they look at her like she's weird. Yeah. It's like, yeah. No, my dad is dropping me off. Like, y'all are crazy. So, and I don't mean it in a disrespectful way. I'm actually okay. You made, you kind of mentioned in the slide, like, in women empowerment. I'm actually okay with, with women empowerment, but... No, it, it, it's, it's used as empowering being a single mom. You're okay, with oh, okay, yeah. yeah okay. Not, not like it's empowering, it's viewed as empowering. Yeah. Um, all right, well, listen. We You got something to say you want to add to that? No. Okay. Because I didn't know I didn't know if you were ready to speak. I just you know we're no, we're so past good. our time, and so okay. 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 we gotta yeah, we gotta, we gotta end this. But you know maybe for the next time we could talk about that further. We could talk about uh, you know why marriages are and the divorce is such a high rate. Or we, there's other topics that we could talk about. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, for those things, watching, so. comment below. Let us know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we love to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. and then absolutely. we also need to get a a lady on the show. In the next yeah. episode or two. Oh, <laughs> I, I, oh, believe it or not, um, I already have my sister. Okay. My sister was, she heard podcast one. Oh, she's like, oh, shoot. please, you ever want a female's opinion, get me on there. Oh, shoot. She was ready did, to run she say that? And she busted like, I wish y'all would ask me to be on the show. Both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. We will welcome her to the podcast. We, we definitely will buy her coffee. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Comment below. Let us know if you, what other topics you want to dive into. And like and subscribe. It'll help us to make more content like this. Until the next upload. Thank you guys. Peace. Peace. Uh-huh.